it was. Wow. Majestic. I like, this, I like this music because I feel like we're embarking on a new frontier. Yeah. A new frontier, a new Padres team that cannot lose. <laughs> it is eastward <laughs> expansion as we get in our wagons. Our, uh, what do they call them? What is it? Canistoga wagons? I don't, we, I don't know. Is that what they call them? Covered wagons. Covered wagons. And we head east over the Donner Pass. Yeah. Uh, through the uh, the Mississippi, we're going backwards. It was it was <laughs> so bad going west. We decided we should try it again. Ooh, Donner Pass on this show. Who would you eat first? Oh, good question. Ooh, good question. Texters, that's open to you too. Wait seven zero four seven zero. Start your message with team. Hold on. Are we murdering the person, or are we just waiting for him to die first? No, mm. like we get a little hungry, and it's time to start choosing who we're gonna stab oh, in the head with a wooden stick. You'd probably kill me first. Well, you no, say that. You know how to do everything. Hang on. Yeah, you're very yeah. useful. I would probably kill Fletch, and here's the reason See, why. I would try to kill Rich. Well, but hang on. I think mine makes more sense, and here's why. Because now, after being hobbled by this injury for so long, A, mm. he's going to slow us down. B, yeah, that's true. B, there's probably great marbling now in some of those <laughs> muscles that hasn't been used for a <laughs> oh, while. Oh, God. Like, his back straps are probably real, real tender. Well, we mm. saw the cast come off yesterday. We Ooh. saw photos of it. He may be rank. Like, he may kill us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it may be poison meat. The smell is awful. <laughs> I took a Same. shower yesterday, guys, like a full body shower. Wow. It wow. was amazing. Fantastic. Did you did you scrub that leg? I did a little because you're allowed to use light soap and water on it. Yeah, yeah. But that's all I could do. <laughs> Squirt it Lord. with Windex. It's good enough. <laughs> with Windex. <laughs> Can we just wait till like, uh, I don't know, about 10 weeks from now before we embark on this journey? Because then I'll be fully ready and walk. Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll be uh, you'll you'll certainly be ready and raring to go. Uh, Fletch been scooting around for a while. If you missed it, he slipped tragically on an acorn, body slammed his right leg, snapping it in two. <laughs> Recently had surgery, getting plates and screws put in, and now he's on the other side with a gnarly scar. Four more weeks of no walking. Yeah, Four, that's it, though. Four weeks, and, and you're good to go. Four again. weeks until physical therapy begins. Yeah. Okay, all right. So you'll be up and running by June 21st when we're going I, golfing. I so. I mean, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks away. Oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah. perfect. And that's yeah. where we need to go to the Donner Pass so I can have a real chance at killing Rich. Yeah. See, I really feel like you'd get irritated with me the quickest because you'd be like, this, <laughs> this guy, God, he always wants us to do something. Irritated, <laughs> yes, but relying upon more so, yes, because you like know how to make a fire. Yeah, but you what you'd, fig you'd figure it out in the first few days. Like, oh, okay, I saw him do it. We could eat him now. <laughs> <laughs> he built the fire that we will now cook him on. I also just think Rich would be the tasty really you yeah think? I, I think he would be the toughest right but it's like the cows that get like massaged and worked out the most are the ones who end up tasting <laughs> yeah, the best but he, he rich uses, has been massaged by therapists his entire life oh, he's he's, no, been able he's to lift overused the muscles yeah see that's that's yeah. what you're forgetting is i'm like Just a, his brain we can't eat that part it's all messed up <laughs> yeah, probably that, no that, offense right. stay away from that <laughs> yeah that, you want to talk about poison the mead <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just soupy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. honestly yeah it's just the, that's the t most tender part you're gonna be really happy with the brain um yeah maybe i would make a delicious meal a couple of fingerling potatoes right maybe some roasted asparagus guys yeah. uh i did reach out to the fister hotel oh, um God. i i spoke to several people there and this is literally what i was told <laughs> the official position of the Fister Hotel is that we are haunted by the spirit of hospitality. <laughs> Sweet That's Jesus. dumb. Yes. So then I reached out to several ghost hunters around the Fister Hotel, and uh, I talked to one of them. It was at hauntedrooms.com or something like that. And uh, they seemed game, and then they stopped returning emails and or phone calls, which technically I've been ghosted. <laughs> I get it. I get so it. I don't know. That's where we stand right now. Or maybe the ghost got them when they were going to come on the show to talk about. I uh, could be, could be. So I don't know if we get an email in the next hour or so, we're bringing them on. Oh yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Now maybe yeah. a mistake, but it should be a lot of fun. And text line, you're feel free to chime in on this one. David Vasse is going to be joining the show at eight fifteen this morning. Yeah, for anybody who doesn't know, this is like a probably twice annual. Mm, sometimes three times annual event for this show the morning show here on big ridge td and fletch we've made it i guess our choice yeah that's the right word it's our choice to welcome in this dodgers insider the host of dodgers talk he does pre and post for the dodgers all throughout their season he's a friend 
But more than that, he's a friend of me. He's a, a type of person who we welcome onto the show with eager anticipation. And every single time he comes on, I think either one side or both feel like almost very dirty in the exchange because we try our hardest to make fun of him and the team that he covers. And in turn, he does the same thing to us. So if you have any Dodgers related question after the Padres take two of three games against them in LA, how does it feel to be losers? Um, go ahead and get them, uh, get them teed up on the text line seven zero four seven zero. Start your message with team, or you could even use the talk back feature on the free iHeartRadio radio app. It's a little microphone button. If you're listening to our station, it's next to the play button. You click on that. You can leave us about a 20 second, 30 second voicemail. And maybe we could even air the question that you asked for Basset when oh, he's yeah. on with us. Yeah, you can ask him yourself. You ready yeah. for the text I sent David two days ago now? Yeah, let me hear it. Hey, David, want to hop on with me and the boys tomorrow to talk about the weekend series and your show winning the Padres the entire thing? <laughs> wow. He didn't, wow. Like that. he didn't like it. Um, so David Vasse coming up. Also, John Fink, Four Corners correspondent. Ooh, good. Uh, he's going to bring us all the stories you didn't know you needed to know. That's going to be coming up later in the show. We also have two pairs of tickets. Uh, we're going to be giving away. It was Lakeside Rodeo tickets again. Yeah. Uh, we got those Lakeside Rodeo tickets. And then uh, as well as that, well, I'm forgetting what the other pair of tickets was. Don't worry. I got you. Uh, the because you didn't that, put it in the yeah, goddamn yeah. rundown again. Know, that was, did you say GD? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we, we can't GD it. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's the Indoor Football League, San Diego Strike Force. That's right. They hard hits, tons of fun for families and friends. Sunday, 428. That's April 28th against Bay Area Panthers. SDStrikeForce.com for tickets and info. SDStrikeForce.com. Uh, yeah. So we're going to give away those two pairs, Lakeside Rodeo and Strike Force tickets coming up later in the show. Okay. So check this out Padres. It didn't look like it was going to be going all that well for Joe Musgrove. Uh, first rattle out of the box, kind of uneasy, fighting his way through some things. Early innings weren't good. 3 nothing lead for Milwaukee. Here we go again. Padres down. Yeah, and then he starts to right himself a little bit. It was a battle, but, but that's kind of been Musgrove this season so far. He doesn't look quite right. He's fighting for – he's fighting every inning, every half inning that he's out there. Um, but he, he somehow – I guess settled. And then the Padres offense showed up in the fifth and 10 batters later, you got a lead that they were able to sustain the rest of the way. The third through the sixth inning, Joe Musgrove looked like Joe Musgrove. It was the first two where he looked like Joe Musgrove yeah. this season. And then he was able to just settle in. And I think that bodes really well for him moving forward this season because he finally got that swagger back the Java Joe esque back. And then the offense, I mean, God, I'm so happy to be so wrong about Jackson Merrill. He, he's he been incredible. Three more hits last night, a couple more ribbies. Like, the kid is just damn impressive. And it's so fun to watch him play. I, I'm happy to be so wrong about this Padres team. I mean, I, I thought it was the same look as last year. I thought it was the same feeling as last season where they just didn't have the fight in them. And it's been almost every game here, the past well, 10 games or so, that there's been fight. I mean, they have, they've been down. They battle back. Here we go again against a, a a decent Brewers team, you know, and arguably they were the 10 best and four team, coming in. Right. And the, and they're playing the Dodgers just two games ago, which could be the best team in the league. I mean, we'll see. They've got one of the highest payrolls. But man, oh man, the Padres coming out and winning, battling back, throwing six up, or they uh, was it six in the sixth or fifth? Oh, whatever. It, it was. was uh, shoot, it was. Was it a five run fifth inning or was it a six run fifth inning? But either way, it was enough to win. Six run fifth. Yeah, yeah six run fifth inning. It, it was just one of those things where we've come to. Yeah, that's right. Because there's a run earlier in the early there's innings. A run in the fourth and then six in the fifth. Mm -hmm. Which how many games now have there been these four, five, six run innings this season so far? Which, man, we had a drought of those last year. Oh, tons. And, and also, it was always this. It was always once the Padres got behind. And it could be by a big score or, or as little as one run. How many times did you you get that feeling like, well, the game's over? Well, not this season, because so far early returns are this team scrappier than they were a year ago. And so that 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 feeling last week where heading into the Dodgers series, the the slogan of the season was consistently inconsistent. Well, now we're starting to see some consistency. Now we're starting to see a scrappy baseball team, 
a team that has the capability to come from behind. They've done it in back-to-back-to-back series now. They did it against the Cubs. They did it against the Dodgers. They did it against the Milwaukee Brewers here already on the road. This bodes extremely well because that intestinal fortitude, when you're behind to come back to stay locked in and stay focused, that was the thing about this team. Last year, it felt like they were resting on their laurels. Last year, it felt like everybody was waiting for Superman because around the corner in your lineup, you had Manny Machado or Juan Soto or Fernando Tatis Jr. or Xander Bogarts or Jake Cronenworth. Somebody's going to do it. Doesn't necessarily have to be me. This could be my night off. Well, mm-hmm. now everybody's not looking to the next guy. Everybody's eating for themselves, and it and it turns into a better team effort as a result. Yeah, and uh, you're talking about coming back from these uh, back-to-back-to-back series. The Cubs, they were down by eight. Down by eight runs, they come back and win that game. The Dodgers, they were down by seven, right? The first game with the Dodgers? Yeah, Yeah, so they come back from seven and win in extra innings. They were down 3 nothing against the Dodgers in game three of that series. They come back, and then yesterday, down by three. So, man, great on these bats, making it happen. And last night, Fernando didn't have a good game. So it was, I mean, it was a cold night for Nando. So it wasn't like you had to lean on him because he had Jackson. Barrel Merrill going three for five, baby. Batting 600 against the Brewers and... You, you, I mean, you you just expect that to stay that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah He's yeah, up yeah. in the three fifties yeah. all the season. I think he's damn close to leading the team in ribbies. Like yeah. Jackson Merrill's been awesome, and he's playing a good center field, which is the first time he's played center, and it that's the underrated part of his game. He said right at the get go, he said, "Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play." You're teetering with a today. Laugh there, no, I mean, I what? I don't know if what? that's what he said. <laughs> he didn't say I, that. I don't. I think you. He didn't say, "Put me in, did. coach. Look at me. No, I can be." Center field? Well, you did it. Uh, the well, ghosted thing, and now this. I, I, I take a lap. Yeah, I think it's time. I think. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's what is this? this? Isn't early. This is a six thirteen. Wow! Wow! But he is a good center fielder. He is good. I mean, what, what's amazing about Farrell Merrill, like every other Padre player, is he's a shortstop. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm going to do something that I don't typically do, and it's give the Padres coaching staff quite a bit of credit here because Fernando Tatis Jr. transitioning to right field his first year, he's the Platinum Glove winner, which I didn't really know was an award until he got it. <laughs> yeah. And then Jackson Merrill, who's literally grown up in baseball as not an outfielder, is able to go out to center field, one of the tougher positions to play in Major League Baseball, and really kill it right away. Well, and and it hasn't it been a criticism of ours of the Padres for you know their development, their coaching staff that they have a hard time bringing players up, getting them going, you know, having the the youth of their roster have some success at the, the major way, league a, level. A rightful criticism. Oh yeah, it's something they've earned over the years. Yeah, I'm not saying we we're wrong, but it was a criticism, and that's starting to change a little bit. And who knows? Maybe this coaching staff stays intact, or maybe Mike Schilt is the silver bullet we were looking for, or maybe it just so happens that AJ Preller needed a fire lit on under his ass, and this this sustains now for a while. Or maybe it's because these players are playing harder because there is floating in the ether somewhere a little bit of extra ambition, a uh, little extra energy being put forth because of the remembrance of Peter Seidler and all he's mm-hmm. done for mm-hmm. this team and all he's done for this franchise and these players. And they feel like, holy, you know, we, we yeah. owe this guy one. Or it could be because they finally cut out the poisonous Juan Soto. Got rid of him. <laughs> yeah, that lazy it bag of bones. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, you sort of wish they could have found a way, but it's fine. It's fine. No, He's in New but, York. But if we didn't get rid of Juan Soto, they wouldn't have Profar. Yeah. Thank you for that. Well, what I got is the Padres sitting with their first winning record this month. Ten and nine baseball team. Okay. It's only the second time this has happened this season. Just saying. Yeah. Pretty good. It's pretty cool. So uh we will speak quietly for now, but maybe they can get something going out in Milwaukee. Uh that would be pretty cool. Also, um, moving on to women's basketball. Caitlin Clark is officially a pro now. Clark, the record breaking face of women's college basketball, the former Hawkeye, was selected first overall by the Indiana Fever in this year's WNBA draft last night. 
Out of the NFL, Kansas City Chiefs star receiver Rasheed Rice and another man are being sued in Texas for over a million in actual damages and $10 million in punitive damages by two people who say they were injured in the six-vehicle crash that occurred late March in Dallas. In pro basketball, Team USA is finalizing a 2024 Paris Olympics men's basketball roster that includes many of the NBA's biggest stars, uh, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, among them per sources. And coming up tonight in the NBA, we got the Western Conference playing tournament beginning 430 tip off. We'll see the eight seed Lakers in New Orleans to face the seven seed Pelicans. Then 7 p.m. We'll see the 10 seed Golden State Warriors in Sacramento to face the nine seeded Kings. We'll have the Eastern Conference play in action tipping off tomorrow night. But how about that? The Lakers are the eight seed fighting for their playoff lives. So have you seen how the play in tournament works? I think it's probably worth reminding people heading into this. So the seven, eight play each other, right? Or no, the eight, nine play each other to get the se seven seed. No, in the playoffs, seven, eight play each other. Eight, to get seven. seven. Hang on, hang on. Whoever Slow wins down. tonight is Slow in the playoffs. <laughs> right, wait, the wait, first wait, game. Hang eight, on. six, seven, five. <laughs> eight, three, Sorry, three, I wrote nine, all this down and then I tried to go off the top. Okay, so the eight, seven seeds play against each to other to get the, the seven seed in the playoffs. The yeah, well, so whoever wins the first Jesus. game tonight, hang on, is slow it. down, stop it. The winners, <laughs> and the winner of the eight, seven seed advances to the playoffs. And then the 9 10 game plays, <laughs> and we'll play the winner of that will play the loser of the first game. Bingo! To get the eight seed in the playoffs. And that wow. happens, all that action happens on Friday on both the Western side and or the West Conference and the Eastern Conference. You got it. It is confusing. Wait, the, nine, like, the 9 10 games happen Friday. No. no. So, okay, check this out. <laughs> seven, well, eight. Who plays today? Okay. Seven, eight. 9 10 in the west play tonight. Oh, Correct. got it. Got yeah, it got yeah, it. yeah. And then All 7 right, 8 9 10 in the east play tomorrow night. Got it. Got it. Got it. Between it's the easy. seven and the eights, whoever wins those games easy. becomes the seven seed on either side. No big deal. And then the Friday night, the loser will take on the winner. Wait, hang on. The loser of the 7 8 game takes <laughs> on the winner of the 9 10 game to decide Perfect. the eight seed. So, exactly. I hope you were taking notes out there, mm -hmm. folks, because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we made that easier to, to decipher. So basically what you, you have to remember is there are six seeds already locked in Western Conference, Eastern Conference, right? And so you're just seeing the final four teams battle it out for who's going to be the seventh seed and the eighth seed in each of these conferences. So four more teams can gain entry into the postseason, but there are eight more teams left in both conferences that are vying for those final positions and they're battling it amount, uh, out amongst themselves in each of their conferences. And so on the Western side tonight, uh, we've got the Lakers in New Orleans to face the Pelicans, and you have the Golden State Warriors in Sacramento to face the Kings. Here's the reality of this whole situation. This is pretty much, I don't want to say it's garbage because it's not, because look, last year, the, the Lakers were a playing team and they made it to the Western Conference Finals. Mm -hmm. Last year, the Heat were a playing team, and they made it to the finals, and they got snuffed by the Denver Nuggets. So the play-in round is important. The problem is teams can sort of brother-in-law it and play soft all year long and turn it on at the right time of the year, and because they they have more talent or they have more experience in the postseason like the Lakers obviously do. Yeah they can turn it on at the right time of the season and they can actually make a deep run. So I think the playoff system in the NBA is inherently flawed as a result. Yeah, I agree with that, uh, with everything you said there. Also, the Lakers, I mean, they know what it's like to be in the spotlight, to be at the big dance. They've already hung a banner this year. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, That's right, the, the midseason tournament. So, I mean, can you imagine if they get to hang a second? Whew, that's a good point. <laughs> I don't think anyone's getting through Denver. Well, on the West? No, no. no uh, what I will say is that this is why I pray the NFL does not expand the playoffs any more than they already have, because you're seeing the glaring example of devaluing the regular season, which, in my opinion, the best thing the NFL has going for it is the regular season of the NFL, because every game feels so important to get into the playoffs, which then notches it up even more. Please, NFL, take this as a lesson. Don't devalue your regular season because you will get guys coasting. You will get guys taking games off. You will get guys not playing as hard during the regular season. 
until they get to the playoffs when the Kansas City Chiefs can coast in with a bad record and then turn it on at the right time. Well, yeah. Well, the, the <laughs> one thing you have going for you in the NFL that bitter, you don't bitter much <laughs> in the in the <laughs> NBA nice. is single elimination. The, the, the biggest problem that the NBA has that college basketball, for example, doesn't, and that's a more exciting playoff format, is series. So all the Lakers need to do is win tonight, and then they get into series matchups. Even if they lose tonight, they have another chance. Well, right. I'm saying, though, the, all they have to do is win one game, right, or, or two, but they just win and they're in. And so it's like, all right, we just got to get over this hump. Just be good enough to play in the first round of the playing round. So at least if we lose, we still have another chance. But if we win and we're in, great. Well, we can do that. We'll we'll find our way. It's, it's so annoying because <laughs> – it puts the Lakers, I guess you could say, in a two-game series, basically, to get into the playoffs in this round. Hang on now. And then a five-game series next round. Hmm. If you were the Lakers, though, wouldn't you almost rather lose tonight so you don't have to play Denver in the first round of the playoffs? Because if you lose tonight and then you play whoever lo wins the 9-10 game, you would be playing against the Timberwolves. You would be the seven seed. Who is the two seed? The two seed is the Nuggets. So if you win tonight, you're playing the Nuggets. If you win, if you lose tonight, win on Friday, then you're playing the Timberwolves. Okay, so here's what I'll say about that. We just we just said out loud, nobody's beating the Nuggets. And I feel pretty strongly about that. But here's the reality. The Lakers, if they got swept. But if you look at those games, all of those games were close. Mm -hmm. The Lakers weren't outclassed by the Nuggets. Those were close games. And who knows, maybe there's a feeling of let's get them early instead of having to face them late. And worst case scenario, if you're going to get beat by them anyways, you'd rather not have all that tread on your tire if you're LeBron James. Seriously. You know? Yeah. So, I, I mean, see that. they beat the Nuggets early. Who's going to beat the Lakers? You know, who's left in the field that are going to compete with them? Well, I, the Western Conference is trickier than the East this year, but but still, it, it I, boy, I don't know what's worse. I don't know if it's worse to face them later, if it's better to face them early. I, I so Ooh, and there's no more five game series that changed a while ago. So even the first round of the playoffs, it's a seven game series. Oh, still. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Oh, that's why it's two months long. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like in a seven game series. Traditionally, the better team wins because yeah. it's just too many games. It's and the longest playoffs <laughs> in it's, history. I'm we start playoffs today. It's not done till the middle of June. Yeah. Yeah, well, wow. welcome to the yeah. NBA. <laughs> Fletch will be walking by Dude, then. I'll be running by yeah. then. <laughs> Not that I run, ever. Yeah. Oh, God. Man. Because with SDFatLoss.com, you don't have to exercise. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Good segue. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good segue. Uh, seriously, it's this process with the broken leg has honestly become so much easier because like six months ago, I started losing weight. And had I been 40 pounds heavier, I can't. I'm, every part of my life would be so much harder. Oh, you would have crumbled your leg. Well, yeah, yeah, it would have shattered yeah, into yeah, oblivion. Yeah. There wouldn't be leg left. Yeah. And also, I can't imagine, like, taking a shower if I had 40 more pounds on me. It's hard enough to do right now. <laughs> I can't imagine it being worse. <laughs> uh, look, if you're trying to make a change in your life as we head into summer months here, and they're not that far away, but don't worry, because you can make a change quick with SDFatLoss.com. It just takes a couple weeks for you to start dropping weight and dropping some serious weight, by the way. Uh, with sdfatloss.com it's free consultation you go over to sdfatloss.com you'll chat with wayne and chloe they've been our weight loss team this whole time they can be yours as well and then you uh build out that roadmap build out the roadmap for the next two months of your life and give yourself two months of dedication and you can drop 30 40 50 pounds within the next two months and you're doing it the healthy way you're doing it the natural way with sdfatloss.com there's no prescriptions no drugs no injections no pre-planned diets or anything it's just you old-fashioned dieting with the roadmap provided from sdfatloss.com. And uh, right now, if you were to call today, you're going to get 200 bucks off when you mention Big Rich, TD, and Fletch. So if you've heard us talking about it a while and thought it might be for you, but you haven't pulled the trigger yet, $200 off today if you call or go to sdfatloss.com and chat with Wayne and Chloe. All right, Big Rich, TD, and Fletch. Coming up next, Olympics are set. At least the basketball side of it. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to be okay. USA is going to dominate. Wait till you hear who's on the team.
We have an Olympic all-star team, 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 team. We'll explain coming up next. This update is presented by Stand By. The Jim Betrayal Real Estate Team. We'll start off with the Padres. They get another win last night, this time in Milwaukee over the Brewers 7 3. Joe Musgrove went six innings. Jackson Merrill, three more hits and a couple more ribbies. In the Olympics, Team USA get their basketball team set. We will let you know who's on it. It's a little bit of a super team. And in the NBA, play in tournament begins tonight. Lakers got the Pelicans. Warriors get the Kings in the West on Wednesday night. The Heat take on the Sixers. Hawks get the Bulls. That's in the East. Would you like to know what your home would sell for today? Get a simple text message with your home's value by texting your address to 855-600-6000. You'll get no phone call, just a text. Jim Patrell has the buyer. Simply text your address to 855-600-6000. Mmm. Mmm. Hey, we got your chance at a thousand dollars here. Uh -huh. Yeah, San Diego Sports seven sixty. Actually, there's a chance to win your share of a quarter million dollars what? that we're giving away here. All you have to do is listen for a keyword. When you hear that keyword, you're going to go over to sportssd.com and enter it for your chance at that thousand bucks. You see me doing math over here in my head? Yeah, I I saw you doing that. A quarter million. A quarter million. Two hundred fifty thousand. That. It's exactly what that is. That is a lot of because guacamole. Because if you have four of those quarters, you would have one million dollars. That's a lot of money. That would is a lot of dough. I mean, I could use a thousand bucks right now. Yeah, I've, Rich could use a thousand bucks could, right now. I could fill my my gas tank ten times. It only costs and, you a hundred bucks a time. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, about a hundred bucks. How much is your gas tank? Twenty gallons, twenty one gallons. That math don't math. Well, it's about five bucks a gallon. Yeah. If you want to, <laughs> well, I guess I mean we're creeping up towards six. I guess yeah, uh, at this point, I just so, filled up my gas tank, and I think I'm I have a similar size, and it was way more than a hundred bucks. It was, was like one twenty. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe the last time I filled it up, it wasn't bone dry. Maybe that was the key, you know, you know, like adults do. That's interesting. <laughs> Definitely. Thank <laughs> so. God we broke that down. Thank you, Fletch, for really sorry, digging sorry. in on that one. No, no. Wait, say, wait a second. That's not good math. <laughs> let's really discuss that. That's let's, my fault. Let's really get down in the weeds here. Or I'm here. just complaining about how much it costs to oh, fill up my freaking ridiculous. gas tank. Dude, I, 
I, that is a pain in the ass, and that is the appropriate place to take this conversation. <laughs> like, ah, dude, it, it, I, and and bonus bucks, baby. Here's the reality: yeah. you can win a thousand no, bucks. I couldn't remember thousand. the name. It, there, bonus bucks. That's what it is. God, we are so good at yeah. this. It's bonus bucks. Um, no, but isn't it crazy how little things like that piss you off? The truth oh, is, yeah. the truth is, you got it. At most people have it. Like if it, I, when I was a kid, I remember it was there were tough times, and you're scraping together five bucks just mm -hmm. to put something in your gas tank. Yep. And I know some people live paycheck to paycheck, and sometimes scraping together a couple extra dimes. That's 100 percent an experience in this country. I'm not downplaying that at all. But for the most part, we complain about gas prices, and for the most part, like we've got it. We could we could we could spend the extra fifty cents, but for whatever reason. Gosh, like it just grinds oh. me to I'm so mad when I see like when they're especially when it's like a 20 cent jump oh, where man. it goes from, say, being 490 to 510. Oh. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, as you're filling up your tank, you know, maybe every week, maybe it's every three or four days, whatever it is. You fill the gas tank up and three weeks ago it was 80. And then two weeks ago, it was 90. And then a week ago, it was 100. Now it's 110. You start to go, whoa, 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 well, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, I'm like, you will not take that additional $6.75 <laughs> for me, not from my cold, dead hands. And then I get to the drive through line at Starbucks. I'm like, can I have a mocha frappuccino <laughs> yeah, yeah. with a soy half-calf uh, Would you like anything foam? to eat? Would you like some uh, fresh, warm bread? As it turns <laughs> out, I would like warmed bread. And I will pay you. Three dollars and eighty-seven cents for that fresh, warm bread through the drive-through window. Thank you. It's like yeah. when you go spend like one hundred and twenty bucks on groceries, and then you get back in the car, and the first thing you do is say, "You want panda tonight?" Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm gonna let all this spinach we bought just completely rot in the refrigerator, right. and we're gonna eat out most of the nights this week. That sounds accurate. <laughs> yeah, that sounds accurate. Oh boy, uh, yeah. Ooh. Mm. Uh, dream team dream team dream yeah. team guys i Easy. mean i'm not talking about this show well although this is already locked in yeah <laughs> they're building that theirs in the nba <laughs> uh the olympics coming up in paris the uh the team usa basketball team a little bit stacked i don't know how this team loses if they do it will be horribly embarrassing if they do it'll be like luka Doncic scoring 120 points okay i'm gonna give you the names this is the names to date this is per sources lebron james steph curry kevin durant joel Embiid, anthony davis devin booker anthony edwards the minnesota guard who's unbelievable jason tatum Drew Holiday, who just signed a huge extension with uh, Boston, uh, Bam Adebayo, and Tyrese Halliburton, one of the biggest uh, point scorers in the league right now. So, I, I okay. If this, <laughs> I mean, I, this is the Avengers. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> if kidding. They, if they lose, it's they're, because they they ran into like a legitimate space villain. When they're currently leaving one slot open, you know, just in case they need to slide somebody else in there. Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah Michael Jordan. <laughs> right. Bill no. Murray. Yeah. I'm glad <laughs> he's Space Jam Space Jam. one. I'm glad he's on the team, but Joel Embiid was not born in America. What what's the qualifications? Um you just have to be an American citizen and it's game on because I'm stoked he's on the team. I, I believe that's what it is, actually. Is or he or you can no, he was born in Cameroon. Yeah, my so he's nationality Cameroon French American. Is that a what's I've... it called of United States? Uh, like a, a territory, uh, a ter yeah, territory. No, I, think, I think you can play for your citizenship country, or you can play for your birth country. Those are the only two you can choose. I believe that's correct. Because and like Pau Gasol never played for Team USA; he no, always played for, for Spain. Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some some uh, players have dual citizenship, and then like you said, I think certain players just play for the team that uh, the country that they were born of. Like for example, is uh, Jokic is he playing for Team Serbia? I would imagine. Uh, yeah, because he's not on this list. I would have to guess that he's going to play for his home country. And yeah, there will be many others, basketball stars from around the world representing their own country of origin. But again, when you look at some of these names, on he this played team, for Serbia in the World Cup 2023. Okay, so, so chances yeah, are, yeah, sure he is. Hmm. This is he's dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> and we will never forgive him. <laughs> We're keeping that one slot open just in case he wants to ride his Serbian horse back onto Team right. USA. He's right. the funniest dude. It seems like he does not give a crap about basketball. He just wants to get back to his hometown and race those horses. Yes. That's all he cares about. Or we're buy him or do whatever the hell he does. He works in horse trade, <laughs> literally in horse trade. 
when he's not winning NBA championships. Our Olympic team with this open slot should just do like a lottery and let some kid be on the team. <laughs> J Riff. Like, <laughs> well, well, I was thinking, you know, like. Uh, and then when they're when, was on the dream team when they're up by 60 team. over some random team yeah. he gets to go in and, and like, now oh. jonathan rifkin checking in <laughs> team italy down 67 points here in the fourth quarter at the score is 69 to 2 <laughs> you just see j riff like kind of just like he's like flexing uh -oh. making, making sure that his like jersey's straight he's all excited <laughs> the tiniest little dude on the court <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that's what they should do. Because, I'm in. I, I mean, are they going to need this other slot? Insane. No, no. I mean, right. I mean, right. But I you got to give it to somebody like probably a young guy in the NBA who's got their teeth, you know, like, like what about just like some, like, I don't know, 12 year old kid who loves the NBA and plays for his middle school. That says cool. team USA managing director. Grant Hill is keeping one roster slot open ahead of a July training camp and exhibition games in Las Vegas. Sources say USA basketball, blah, blah, blah. So I named all those players team USA coach. Steve Kerr will be again. They get Steve Kerr as their coach will be coaching Curry, his four time champion and two time MVP guard uh, in his first Olympic appearance. Kerr will also be reunited with Durant. You forget it, but he was a Golden State Warrior once upon a time, won two championships with the Warriors. So the dubs are kind of back together from that standpoint. Uh, yeah, look, this is this is fun. This is when I don't know if it's fun because they may go out there and there may not be a single ball game worth watching because well, they'll be so dominant. Nah, I'm, but, fine. I'm fine with that in the Olympics when it's a uh, team America. Yeah. USA, 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 USA. I got to tell you, this is actually the first thing, first news from the Olympics here that made me go, oh, hey, I want to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise I'm like, eh. It's not going to be in the right time zone. I'm going to, they're going to show it on TV and it's going to be, I already know who won the thing. Yeah. And then summer Olympics, that's when like swimming will get a little bit of juice usually. Well, maybe oh, not yeah. since Michael Phelps is out. There's yeah. a pop there. I always catch myself watching diving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, especially the synchronized one. It's like, oh. how the hell do they do that? So funny that you said that I was going to say synchronized diving because how the hell do they do that? <laughs> it's a, like, they, they are they, exactly the same. Do they shout something like, <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <laughs> like how does that's, it that's like the go time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, because there's it doesn't seem verbal. I don't know. It's amazing. Huh. Yeah, is it? I don't flag know. football is going to be in this round, right? Oh yeah, isn't there like uh, what are the new sports? Flag football is one of them, I think. Cornhole. Uh, might, might be. Oh, skateboarding. I think. Is oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, freaking curling is an Olympic sport. Cornhole should be an Olympic sport. Dude, one hundred percent agree if, with that. If we don't win skateboarding, jeez. <laughs> doing it wrong i mean and it, i mean it should be also like three dudes and three women from san diego I'll, I'll toss this out here about the dream team or the usa basketball oh. team lebron james playing in his fourth olympics a career that includes bronze in 2004 gold medals in uh 2008 and 2012 if it matters to you this is probably the last olympics that lebron james is going to play in you know we're talking about the masters i think that's a little bit more important with tiger woods Dude. but it it probably will be the last Olympics we see James in. End of an era. Guys. What? Forgot. Yeah. Break dancing. Break dancing what? is now. Break dancing is now Dude, an Olympic sport. Okay. What? Hold for one what? second. When I tell Can you. They put that on prize picks. I will watch. Oh, please, for the <laughs> love of God, please. I will watch <laughs> more or less head spins <laughs> every second oh, oh. of the dude. My favorite part about break dancing is the part before they break dance where they're just doing this move. Like they're just kind of like, Oh, <laughs> like they're getting ready. Like they're getting ready to go in. Yeah. yeah you don't know when it's coming. You don't know when it's coming. You don't know when it's coming. It's, 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 it's my favorite part. Do you think the anticipation? Are they going to have a uh, refrigerator box that they've cut open that they break dance on top of? I, mean, I don't know that's the only way to do it i don't know if i'm gonna be able to hear another thing what says <laughs> oh, you, you, what, you now broke the oh, other headphone this, that's is, good. this is good uh, oh. i can't believe we left it out but we get to root for a non-usa team in beach volleyball because team colombia will be there okay and team brazil oh, wow 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 yeah Hold on, let's just Google. All of a sudden, <laughs> Columbia. Proud to be a Colombian <laughs> volleyball team. Uh, I think Brazil might be better. I can't remember. Yeah, could you look up Brazilian beach volleyball team? Okay. Just Not the dudes, I'm, though. 
You know, you, oh God, for the love of God, please no. <laughs> Although I'm I mean, just gonna do dude, beach they're cool. They're super cool, yeah. dude. Um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> very aggressive. So yeah, we are going to be watching beach volleyball <laughs> this year. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. All right. Well, <laughs> there's that. Yeah. Hey, some weird stuff is going on in New York. <laughs> like super weird. <laughs> I think it was meth, dude. You think it was meth? I think, I think he was, was haunted by the spirit of hospitality. <laughs> there, Maybe that too. <laughs> there is something going on with the New York Giants. We will address coming up next. Before we do, I want to address anybody out there who has lower back pain, uh, anybody who has hip pain, knee pain, foot pain, ankle pain. I've got a solution for you. I have a solution that worked for me. Went to the Good Feet store, got sized and fitted for arch supports with the Good Feet staff over there. And I've, I haven't looked back. I feel great. It's it's incredible, the difference. And it, it's actually tough to remember. So I try when I'm talking about the Good Feet store to remember the shape I was in prior to finding this product. And then obviously now I'm living my life much more healthily. I feel a lot better on a daily basis. And it's all because of these art supports. They get your body in alignment. They get you feeling better. Every single day I wake up, I feel ready for the day. And it's because when I spend time on my feet, I'm actually getting the feedback that I need. I had no idea I even had arches. I thought I had these the flattest feet on the planet, but they found them. They found them and they support them with these arch supports. And uh, it was a great, it was really a godsend. I, it was one of those things where somebody suggested it to me. I'm like, there's no way this is going to work. And again, it's one of those things where I was out thinking the room when I went to the Good Feet store, it worked for me. It could work for you. So check them out. They have 200 plus locations around the U.S. and overseas. The Good Feet store, again, if you have lower body joint pain, this can be your solution. Goodfeet.com. Check them out at goodfeet.com.
Is Daniel Jones okay? Could we send like a wellness check on the Giants quarterback? We'll explain coming up next. Rich TD and Fletch with you on this fine Tuesday morning. We got some play in action happening in the NBA. So a game that matters tonight or two that matter. Uh, specifically, if the Lakers beat the Pelicans, they're in the postseason. They lock in the seven seed. So a lot of interest tonight there. Um, we'll get to some women's basketball. That's on the other side. A little teaser is at the end of the road. We'll explain that. But first, To the NFL we head and out to New York where Daniel Jones is answering questions this offseason, staring straight into the soul asking said questions. Is everything cool with Daniel Jones? When I saw this clip, I was like, huh, this is weird. I mean, it's just just Daniel Jones answering questions. Then the longer I looked, I'm like, is he possessed by a demon? Why is he opening his eyes so large? He looks like he's um, like he's mad but he's trying to pretend he isn't. And so if you just cover up his eyes, you're like, oh, that's just a guy answering questions. And then when you look at his eye, only his eyes, you're like, oh, that's a murderer. That's yeah. somebody committing murder. I mean, it kind of looks like maybe he's been drinking and he was asked if he was drinking. So like, he thought, oh, the best way to not look like I was drinking is if my eyes are completely open. It was bizarre. It reminded me so much. Do you remember Adam Gase's opening press conference? A little bit. When yeah. he was at the Jets. He was coach? with the Jets. Yeah. yeah. And he just every he went viral immediately because everyone's only ever seen him with a hat, which covered up his massive forehead, which made his eyes a little less daunting. But Daniel Jones yesterday, it looked like he was on drugs. And now I, the New York media kind of was grabbing these clips and putting them out there like, is everything OK with Daniel Jones? Because this isn't normal. Yeah, it almost looked like well, AI generated. Daniel Jones was answering questions. So yeah, actually, that it's so funny you mentioned that, too, because there was a little bit of that uncanny valley feeling to Daniel Jones. And if you're unaware of what that that is, it's it's that that bridge that. AI can't seem to get across. It's the Turing test, right? It's like if people can tell it's a robot, then it's still safe. But once you get to the point where you can't tell anymore, whether you're conversing or seeing a robot versus a person. Well, it's not even that. It's this feeling of creepiness that you feel when something gets too close to being human. Like when it's it like Daniel Jones, it almost feels like you're 
looking at somebody who's trying their hardest to be a human being and it is creeping <laughs> you the hell out all the while. By the way, mind you, the draft is quickly approaching and the drum beat is getting louder as we get closer and closer to draft ba- draft day. I mean, I'm curious what they do. I mean, is it possible? I don't think it's likely, but is it possible that they go and they get themselves a quarterback? They're Do paying they, Daniel wow. Jones a tremendous amount of money, aren't they? Because like some of the money they probably should have given to Saquon a year ago, they gave to Daniel Jones in that massive quarterback contract. Wait, he had a good season two seasons ago. And so, yeah, they locked him in. They locked him up. Look, I was on the Danny Jones bandwagon. I thought he was a fun watch. I thought he was good for the Giants. He he seemed to be a, a good spirit, a glue guy there for him. And then last season sucked, sucked. So they picked sixth. I mean, J.J. McCarthy, Drake May might be available at six. Oh, the word on the street is, uh, was it because Chargers have the fifth currently? Currently. So they the, might trade down to the Vikings or the Broncos for one of them to jump up to take J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, possibly. I mean, the, the rumor mill is the Vikings are taking that, which J.J. McCarthy goes five. Man, I tell you what, if the Broncos don't move people around or don't move some trades around and they miss out on a quarterback, it's going to be a long season for Bronco fans. So you look at it, Bears, Washington, New England Patriots could all presumably select a quarterback. So, so that would be Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels in some order. Yeah, yeah, you would assume. You would assume. So maybe three quarterbacks off the board. Cardinals don't need a quarterback. Chargers don't need a quarterback. Both of them potentially could trade down. And then you get to the Giants. So the fourth quarterback available could potentially, if no trades are made, go to the Giants or potentially look, the Giants are sitting there. They have Daniel Jones, but like I said, the drum beats getting louder for a replacement there in New York. Would they be willing to take a call from Arizona or Los Angeles and them say, Hey, look, you know, the Vikings want to come all the way up the board. We'll give you the last refusal on trading up and matching some of the capital they're spending to come and get this selection if you need a quarterback. And I don't really see them being that motivated because they do have DJ under contract, but man, oh man, with those eyes, I'd be worried about him murdering the whole team <laughs> or that he's an alien coming to abduct the whole team. <laughs> yeah, right. You well, know, there's some serious concerns. Not, not a reptile person, though. No, 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 no. no, 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 no they're no, green just... and they have the worst intentions. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's absolutely correct. Hey, you know what? Um, on the other side, we'll get into our morning monologues and also this story out of Texas that I was covering boots on the ground just a week ago. My goodness, feels like forever ago now. Um, <laughs> but we will give you the update there. Um, but uh, before we do, got to talk to you guys about prize picks. The NBA and prize picks, it feels like uh, the happiest of marriages. We have the playing round tonight in the Western Conference. We're going to have some prize picks actions all over the place. I am friggin' pumped. Well, if you're like me and you don't really have a ton of interest in the play in round, just set a prize picks lineup because then you're very interested. And that's exactly what I'll be doing tonight. Uh, I can't wait for it. You got Lakers and Pelicans. That means Zion, LeBron. And then you got the Warriors, so you can get Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, all these different stars here that are going to be playing basketball tonight. You can make it a little more interesting by downloading the Prize Picks app, using promo code DOGS, getting a first deposit match up to 100 bucks, and playing some Prize Picks tonight and make the game a lot more fun. I tell you what, it, it makes it a lot more interesting when you're not just looking at your phone the whole time during a game, but you're actually watching because you got something on the line. I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. Oh, Le- LeBron James, 26 and a half points. More Less. Fletch. No, stop. I'm taking more. Okay, what else? What else? Should I look up Steph Curry? Huh? Let me hang on. I'm going to look at the- you. You keep talking. I'm going to find another. Here we go. Steph. Well, Price Picks currently is the number one daily fantasy sports platform in the continent. That's right. In all of North America, over 3 million active members here in the US of A, including Rich Ornberger. So that number needs to be updated. 3 million and one. And let's make it 3 million and two by you downloading that app right now using promo code dogs get that first deposit match up to 100 bucks and you can start playing prize picks right now okay check it out i just put in an entry while fletch was talking that's how easy prize picks is so i'm going with more 26 and a half points lebron james more points rebounds and assists 39 and a half for steph curry and there it is 20 dollar entry i can win 60 bucks Prize picks is my favorite. Again, wow, you promo- play it so safe. What do you mean? I never do anything less than a six man entry. I know you always go with the big. I, yeah, I'm telling you, I take these little shots and I'm making all of them. You know, just feed me under the hoop, dog. I go two player entries, but listen, that's the beautiful thing about it. it <laughs> you go 20 to win 60, I go 20 to win like 700. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the 
world. Listen, this dog's got to eat. This dog's got to eat. <laughs> Use promo code DOGS. That's D O G S. Get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred bucks. That's right. Prize picks. Download the app right now. First deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars uh, using promo code DOGS. Okay, so I'm going to hit you with the motto it's prize picks. Picking more, always more for less. Prize picks on prizepicks.com. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Prize picks. <laughs>
This update is presented by Cal Coast Credit Union. We will start off here with the Padres. They got another win last night, this time in Milwaukee over the Brewers 7-3. Joe Musgrove, six innings pitching. Jackson Merrill, three more hits, a couple more ribbies. In the Olympics, Team USA setting up their basketball team. It's reported to include LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, among others. And in the NBA, the playing tournament begins tonight. Lakers got the Pelicans. Warriors take on the Kings in the West on Wednesday night. Heat take on the Sixers. Hawks will get the Bulls in the East. With MasterCard Local, Cal Coast Credit Union members can earn 5% cash back on purchases made with Cal Coast MasterCard Credit and Debit Cards every time they stop at participating businesses. Learn more at calcocu.org slash shop dash local. TD and Fletch, happy Tuesday to those who celebrate. Lots to celebrate last night. Padres have a winning record for the first time this month. They beat Milwaukee in comeback fashion. We'll get back to that game. Also, we've got our morning monologues coming up in just a little bit. But before we get to any of that, a couple of storylines to hit. One of the NFL, we'll get to that in a moment. But let's lead off this hour with something interesting uh, to some. So Caitlin Clark was the face of women's college basketball. And I say to some because I'm very curious if this, I, she's the darling of sports right now. I, I mean, the, the, that flame has not been extinguished. I mean, pretty much at the top line of every single sports website she out there. She was on SNL this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, The Indiana Fever take her with the first overall pick. So the, it, like, the, the flame is not flickering out just yet. But this has happened many times where we have been very excited and exalted a women's college basketball player. And as soon as they entered the WNBA, all of a sudden the interest diminished and then completely dropped off the map. Does this happen again with Caitlin Clark? Uh, I'm going to sound a little bit like a jerk here. I, I think I'm already kind of done. I'm already kind of out. And now it may change once the season starts and I'm interested. I'd like to see how she plays, but I feel like the story is kind of written. You jerk. Yeah, I know. No. I know I am. You're right. What? <laughs> okay, good. Because, I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, because I'm way, like, I think you're wrong. <laughs> let the record reflect. I think TD's wrong. And I think she's a superstar. And I am going to follow her career with the Indiana Fever. And here's the deal. I, TD, I, I, I genuinely fever. do hope you're wrong. Like, I hope yeah. that Caitlin Clark mm. goes and rises the WNBA much like she rose women's college basketball. But the thing is, yes, she raised the profile of women's college basketball, but it's not that it wasn't uber popular before. She wildly popularized it to the point where it had never been before. But there were UConn teams with Gino, however you say his last name. Ariama. Uh, no, Dan Marino, uh, who <laughs> <laughs> he had UConn teams that Wait, made he history. Work he had incredible teams that like did catch the nation's uh, attention, but not like Caitlin Clark did. I'm curious, just like you guys are, whether she could do that at the next level or not. Here's what I'll say. I didn't know that that team existed until yesterday. Yeah. The Indiana Fever. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Indiana. I'm the yeah. same. In fact, the if you same. ask me to name five WNBA teams and I've worked in sports for six and a half years now, I couldn't do it. I could I actually sparks fever aces aces. Yeah, they're oh, the Vegas team. Okay. Um, and the only reason I know that is because Tom, Tom Brady's Brady is out. Liberty, New York Liberty. You, know, if you started making up names right now, I'd be like, "Wow!" But by the way, that's where the that's where it ends for me. So we were able to name four. I probably could have only named two or three on my own. I agree with everything you just said. Look, Conor McGregor brought an entire country, like the entire country of Ireland, to the UFC. He captivated everybody because he was a bigger than life personality. It, there, Caitlin Clark is an amazing player. She's exceptional, and I hope that her play can draw more and more eyes to the sport because I don't think less sports is good. I think more sports is better. I think that, like, we wouldn't have known how much fun the UFC was without a great ambassador like Conor McGregor to usher more people people closer to the octagon to get more and more people interested in the sport. I think that's good. I think it's good when you have a true ambassador. Is she that ambassador? I don't know. This is what I do know, though. There have been many other exalted college women's basketball players who went to the WNBA, and that's when the flame flickered out. Candace Parker is the most recent, in my mind, who really took over college basketball. Uh, she Brittany was, Griner. 
yeah, another one. You know, like out of Baylor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, Maya Moore out of UConn. Candace Parker was out of Tennessee. I, she, the dunk. You remember yeah. when she dunked in a game? It was one of the biggest things ever. Candace Parker, you were like, oh my gosh. Like the WNBA, I can't wait to see. And then it just went away. The Look, story just went away. I also think Caitlin Clark has a better shot than any of those people did at making the WNBA relevant because let's not, 18 million people watch that game. Now, depending on ESPN's numbers, how accurate that is, we'll never know. But 18 million people are reported to have watched the championship game in the in, of college basketball this year. If she's able to draw a portion of that to the WNBA, it's a smashing success. And let's be very clear about what the NBA has done over the last few years, and that's kind of pushed viewers away. So mm -hmm. the WNBA does have a window. If there's ever been a situation for it to do something, it's now. Do I, I don't necessarily think it can happen, though. Yeah, I guess I where I get hung up is in the news, in the media, on social media, uh, uh, across the Internet. You see so many stories about Caitlin Clark. Of, you know, she's amazing. She's changing the game. You need to be excited about this. You need to be behind this. You need to be. And I and I am. I mean, I think everything she's done is cool, man. I think all the eyeballs are cool, but I still have this factor of going, eh. I don't know. I don't know how much I'm into it. I'm just not. I'm just not into it. Like, yay, hey, hats off. But I'm just not into it as much as you want to try to force feed me to be into it. Yeah, and th there's going to be a lot of people like that who were there for this storyline, but they're like, yeah, but I'm just not all that interested in women's basketball. We'll see. We'll see where this story goes. Uh, we'll go from one Iowa Hawkeye to another. And by the way, Big Rich, TD, and Fletch, we do have those Lakeside Rodeo tickets coming up on the show. Also, a pair of tickets to go see Indoor Football League San Diego Strike Force coming up later in the show. But TJ Hawkinson, Iowa football player turned pro. Uh, he now plays for the Vikings. And he suffered that low hit from Kirby Joseph in the Week 16 game uh, where the Detroit Lions safety absolutely nailed him, destroyed his knee. His season was over. And that late season hit is going to result in him missing a portion of the beginning of the regular season for the Vikings this upcoming season. Now, TJ Hawkinson is one of those players who you would argue, I mean, he's not a star, but he's certainly one of those guys you know from fantasy football. He's certainly one of those players who can be impactful in big moments. Here's the interesting thing. he He's making a point that I agree with and disagree with at the same time. He's saying the NFL should take a much closer look at low hits on defenseless receivers now. So this is coming off the hip drop tackle being banned. He's asking for more things to be banned by the defense. So this is the 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 full quote. Um, so he says, let me, it's tough. He said, it really is. We're big guys running through the middle of the field. This is a business. I don't think anyone goes out on the field wanting to injure a player like that. So I'm looking at the light of, and I'm hoping that it's not what the intent was to injure a player in that sense. But I do think uh, to have it happen a couple of weeks later with Higby, I think it's something that the league needs to take a look at and see what it can do. So all it takes is one guy to make a point of it. And then one article to be written about it. And then for it to happen to another star player. And then all of a sudden a, a story will gain traction, just like the hip drop tackle. And just like the, the hits to the quarterbacks before that, and just like oh, the defenseless receiver, you know, you can't hit him when he isn't looking all these things. It's, I mean, we're getting to the point where there are going to be zones where you're allowed to tackle players and only within those areas on their body. And if not, you're going to get flagged. You're going to be penalized. That's yeah. where we're heading toward. Nah, you remember it, Tony Gonzalez? It was on a random pregame show a few years ago for Fox. And Tony Gonzalez talked about the fact that before games, he used to talk to whoever was going to be guarding him and saying, hey, man, if you wrap me up, I'll go down. Like this was later in his career. He said, just don't go for my legs. Like I have a couple more years to make some money. Just don't go for my legs and hurt me to where I can't do that for my family. And I think guys listened. Uh, Rich, uh, you would know better than me, obviously, but did, would people have those conversations on the field pregame? All right. I'll give you a perfect example. I overheard a conversation that Larry Fitzgerald was having on the field while I was with the Arizona Cardinals. Star receiver. If you don't know who Larry Fitzgerald is, look him up. The dude was absolutely electric in his time. Um, but Larry Fitz, he was telling a defender, he's like, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. And he goes, what? He was like, don't tackle me low. He's like, if you want to hit me that hard, hit me up up top. He's like, I'd rather you hit me in the head than hit me in my knees. And what he's mm -hmm. talking about is 
I can play through getting popped, you know, and having a little minor concussion. I can't play if you tear my MCL. I can't play if you tear my ACL. I can't tear. I can't play if you you break my ankle or you sprain my ankle. Like, but I can play if I get my bell rung a little bit. And so, yeah, it was a common refrain from receivers over the middle or tight ends. Hit me up, hit me up top instead of hitting me low because you could take me out for weeks if you take out my legs. Man, oh man, I do not want anybody to get hurt. I don't want to see it. I want to see the best quality game you could possibly see. I want to see everybody playing at their tip top level. So the games are absolutely incredible because they're close. However, man, the NFL, you are at the tip top right now. I mean, you, you have more viewers than ever. You have more people interested in the NFL than ever. You want to make people walk away from it. Add more rules. Hawkinson echoed. This is from the article on ESPN. Other NFL players in saying that he would prefer to concussion despite the long-term risk of head injuries. He says, and I quote, that puts me out for two or three weeks. He said, this puts me out for nine months. I can't even train. I would have had a normal off season getting ready for the season. I know some concussions are worse than others, and I don't want to go down that train of what's worse and what's better, but I've had a concussion. It took me a week. I'm just looking at it from that pure timetable. And he's 100% right. There's a, there's a reality to playing football. It is a contact sport. There is an awareness that if you play on the offensive line, the defensive line, a linebacker, a running back, a receiver, a tight end, you are going to get popped. You're going to get concussions. And as a matter of fact, during this time frame that you're playing, you would almost prefer it in some cases because the reality of a lower body joint injury is what he described as a dude. And nine months, that's not the end of it. Because I remember one time I completely tore my MCL in 2012 playing for the Cardinals. And when I signed with the Chargers, it took me, I want to say, eight to nine months for an MCL that was supposed to take five months just to get normal range of motion back in my quadricep. Like I had this part of like, like if you do like a normal leg extension where you're seated and you're just lifting your leg up to point your leg straight out. There was like, once my leg hit 45 degrees, my quad would just start quaking. Mm. And I just could not get it to fire all the way through the range of motion. And dude, it took forever to get that back. And I kept thinking to myself, like, gosh, like, this is an MCL. Like, thank God I didn't tear my ACL. Thank God there wasn't more damage to my knee because that could have ended my career right there. You know, it's just, I understand that, that refrain from these players. Okay. Okay. I'll do it. If you right. guys, if you I mean, guys what, want. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Okay. Look, whatever you want. The, mo the morning monologue is a check in to the, the play in tournament tonight because this is the really one of the few opportunities in the NBA playoffs you get to see a win in advance game. Like it's not single elimination. If LeBron and the Lakers lose, they get the consolation match on Friday. But if they win, they're the seven seed. So it sort of feels like that game against the Pelicans. The Warriors game they have set up tonight, like, boy, oh boy, like this is this is actually going to be like some some good hard basketball playing because there are real stakes here. This yeah. is the first time I've been excited for the NBA all year, and but the Warriors oh. Kings is oh. elimination mid season oh, yeah. mid season tournament though it didn't get me at all. I don't think I watched a second. <laughs> you. You really fought hard about I how said, great it was. How often did I say it's not for me? But I think we got to give it a chance before. We and then he didn't trip. watch a yeah. single game. <laughs> That's damn right, I didn't. Yeah. It's not for me. <laughs> we got to give this a chance. Yeah. And what I mean by that is everybody <laughs> who I'm talking to, yeah, not me. My point was you have to let it happen. And for NBA fans who like it, <laughs> Let them make the decision. We can't call it a failure before that's, it starts. That's exactly Regardless. what you said this morning before the show when you tried to Justin Bieber me. You were just like, let it happen. Yeah, and you let and it happen. You know what I said? I was like, you keep your dirty grubby yeah. little hands on me you right. sick, you that's right sick you don't like the neck kisses <laughs> well, and then you we ran and you kept wheeling around following yeah. us around yeah so i'm way faster than you guys yeah. right now yeah you yeah, are yeah he's, a, he's, but he's Rich, on four wheels the point is well heard like i can't wait to see lebron and davis actually trying i can't wait to see steph curry actually trying in a game because you feel like you just don't get that during the regular yeah. season yeah yeah well my my monologue yeah td what do you got it's a leftover from yesterday. I, I almost went this route yesterday, but it's, it's been something I've been thinking about. And at first, and I, I'm glad I didn't do it yesterday because yesterday I was a little angry. Sure. Okay. Sure, Today, yeah, not yeah. so much. So like when you open up a package of fruit snacks, right? 
it doesn't matter which one. Shark bites, of course. Yeah, um, Welches. Yeah, Welches. Yeah, I don't care. You, you get a handful of fruit snacks. The Scooby Doo ones are great. Scooby Doo. Yeah, Scooby Doo yeah. fruit snacks. I like the light blue ones. The, <laughs> no problem. Are there. those shaggy? Dude, although so. the the Welches little strawberry ones, they're good, man. Very good, real good. But if you open up a package of fruit gushers, you have you know, my you get, attention. You, get you like, have my you, attention. You get like six. In a pack. I mean, literally it. That's it. Six. And uh, yesterday I was thinking, what the heck, man? Fruit gushers, are they so hard to make you can't put more in a pack? And then I slept on it. And I woke up this morning and went, you know what? Fruit gushers only give you six because that's all they need. Yep. They make do with yep. six because yep. they're that good. Scarcity. Right? And then I thought, we should follow the fruit gushers motto and just do the best with what we got, even if it's only six in a pack. So listen, San Diego Padres, you go out there and you play your asses off with whatever you got. Whatever you got, you be the fruit gushers of Major League Baseball, and you win, baby, win! I selfishly thought you were talking about our show, and we are going to cut our show in half. Like, we are not going to give you the full three hours. Instead, we finish this show at 7.30. That's what I thought, We're, too. Hold on. You know what? Back it up. Hit the dump button. Guys, let's be the fruit gushers of morning radio. We're done in 11 minutes. We got two giveaways we got to do. Oh, not now. <laughs> Quality <laughs> over quantity, baby. Here we go. Yeah. 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 I'll Look, tell you what. That's beautifully stated, and it's absolutely you. true. Scarcity creates interest. All of a sudden, you've got less of a great thing, thank and you. you got a lot more interest. Thank that's you. That's why De Beers is sitting on a, a mountain of diamonds. <laughs> that's, that's true. Controlling the market. True. At NBA, less playoff games, better results. Wow. Ding, 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 wow. ding, ding. All right, Fletch, what do you got? Uh, scarcity creates enjoyment because <sighs> every single one of those gushers, you now like that much more, and you're not popping two in your mouth Thank at you. a time, just one at a time. Thank you. I'm glad you guys chimed in on that because I had no idea where the hell I was going. God, I so. loved it, though. That was your best monologue ever. Wow, you say that every time I say something that you don't cringe at. Yeah, <laughs> accurate. It's all about rewarding the positives, right? Gosh. And just uh, cringing at the thank negatives. You, thank you. Uh, my monologue is going to be super quick. You know, I like to give TV recommendations here. Mm -hmm. So I <laughs> always wait, though, until I see the general public agrees with my take. And the general public does agree with my take on this one. Fallout on Amazon Prime has skyrocketed into the number one streaming show, at least on Prime platforms. And Fallout is awesome. I didn't really like the video games. I found them way too hard and confusing. But the TV show is perfectly digestible, super fast moving. The opening three minutes of that TV show is the most floored I've been from a three minute segment of any show since the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. If you know what that is, you'll understand what I'm saying here. But the actual <laughs> Duke's dropping is freaking awesome. Why Watch it, Fallout. Why was it's it great. called the Red Wedding? Have you not watched Game oh of Thrones? I, I mean, I've watched pieces of it. Yeah, I watched like the end of it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> the Red Wedding floored me for like a week. Okay. All right. More interested in whatever uh, Rich is looking up. <laughs> Dude. What? Th th that's uh, <laughs> that's Molly Quirum. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. The ESPN analyst. Uh, yeah. Um, just hanging out. Just hanging out. Uh, mm -hmm. anyways, yeah. Are I saw you her in the during the show. No, 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 no dude. No, you're no, perfect no, during no, the show. No, no, I'm looking like, up an article. I was like, yeah, who is that person on the screen? And I'm like, oh, I, there it is. There it says in the lower. What do they call it? The Chiron on lower the third. screen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'll just type in that name into Google and. Oddly enough, there were scantily clad pictures. So <laughs> you're perving during the show. I'm not perving. Nobody's perving. Wait, hold on. If you just type in somebody's name and that's what comes up, that's not your fault. There's the internet's fault. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's Google's fault. This is the algorithm that they're sending my way. I did nothing to deserve this. Jeez. Did you see uh, what team was it? Brazil. No, it was the Rockies. The Rockies who had to pinch hit or pinch run. Uh, to try to win a game, they put their pitcher in as the runner. As he came around the bases to try to tag home, he may have broken his hand. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dude, it's just... What happens when you try to do too much? Yeah. Scarcity leads to enjoyment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I could find it. It uh, was too much pitcher that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, the yeah. Rockies, they're going to have a rough one, boys. It's yeah. not looking so good for our friends in Colorado. It's bad that I get enjoyment out of stuff like that because there was a few years ago where somebody on the Cardinals hit a walk-off home run, and when he jumped on home plate, he tore his ACL. Yeah. 
and it's weird that I get like a sort of satisfaction from stuff like that happening. Well, I, mean, oh, I think I'm a sick. Person. You are a sicko. Uh, that is confirmed. Or uh, remember in the playoffs, like this was must have been ten years ago when the San Francisco Giants were in their run, and one of the pitchers jumped over the little the dugout barrier, oh, yeah, the, the fence, fence, yeah, and he tore his ACL running oh, out yeah, to celebrate yeah. I with do the team. Remember it, that? It was uh, Jeremy Affel. It was mm. so sad. Yeah, it was so sad, but also kind of funny. Well. Yeah, what was his name? Grammatica no. famously is tore a, his ACL. The oh. the kicker for the Vikings, he was celebrating. He like jumped up and fist pumped, and then oh, when he landed, yeah. Yeah. he tore his leg See, up. But it's thought, not funny when it happens in the Super Bowl to a San Francisco 49er named Dre Greenlaw. No, I just thought the the one you're talking about there, Rich, it was a little over dramatica. You know what? Hang on a second. No, Lap, no, no, no. Yes, he has a live read, no, and no, I no, want him. Gonna... I want him out of breath. Okay, he, okay. he wait, deserves wait, wait, wait. it. Quick, <laughs> quick lap, and then we're gonna make you do the live read. So, TD, he can't have dramatica, grammatica. Is that the line you want? Wait, is that, is you that, knew this was coming. Oh gosh, he did it again. That's two laps. That's two laps. He's gonna be running for a while. He's gonna come back here and talk about sdfatloss.com like this. Wait, <laughs> Chloe, <laughs> save my life. So coming up, Big Ritz, TD, and Fletch, we do have those pairs of tickets. So one pair of tickets to Lakeside Rodeo. That's going to happen Thursday, April 25th through Sunday, April 28th at Lakeside Rodeo Grounds, Bull Rod and Steer Wrestling. Exciting events all weekend long. Get tickets at lakesiderodeo.com or just keep listening. And I promise you, you should be listening on the other side for an opportunity to win that pair of tickets or a pair of tickets to see the Indoor Football League's San Diego Strike Force. Hard hits, tons of fun for family and friends. Sunday, uh, April 28th, TD just crashed through the door against the Bay Area Panthers. That's scstrikeforce.com for tickets and info. But we're going to be giving away one of those pairs of tickets coming up next, either to Lakeside Rodeo or Strike Force. And with that, and with what? bated huh? breath, and I do mean what? this. I'm just, just saying I'm not used to it. Luckily, SD Fat Loss. <laughs> No exercise required. <laughs> so they, they looked at me and went, yeah, there's no way. There's no way. We need to help out here. So no exercise required with SD fat loss. But still, you're going to lose 20 to 30 pounds in eight weeks. <laughs> and I went, that sounds good. Sounds good because two laps, whoo, it's a lot for me. That is a lot. But you don't want to do one of these fad diets. We've tried these fad diets, you know, like exercise. <sighs> yeah. You may lose some weight. But as soon as you stop exercising, what happens? You're gonna gain all that weight right back. <laughs> <laughs> so don't don't jump on board one of those exercise fad diets or one of those uh, prescription medication diets. You don't need that. The wrong way. It's the wrong way to do it. It's the wrong way to do it. SD Fat Loss will show you the right way to do it. The healthy way to lose weight and then keep that weight off. I lost 31 pounds in eight weeks' time. Okay, listen, listen to me. Okay, <laughs> you think you think someone. In this kind of physical condition, can lose eight or thirty-one pounds in eight weeks on their own. No, uh -uh. <laughs> no, you needed help. You need to win, and Chloe yeah. at sdfatloss.com. That's and, right. And you know what's amazing? When we started this program, they were just like, "Hey, listen, you husky fellas, don't help him out. He's dying." <laughs> no, I know. I'm fine. I'm just let him. I, I, I'm, I'm honestly <laughs> worried about him dying. Uh, <laughs> we have defibrillators. Can you imagine the middle of a weight I'm loss ad read? He's like, you know, it turns out we <laughs> lost Travis. You just hear my head. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's amazing because uh, they got us right really quick. And then just in time for us to be all out of weight to lose, then they give this awesome promotion. Yeah, exactly. And that awesome promotion is $200 off. That's you right. mentioned Big Rich, CD, and Fledge. So check it out. The consultation when you go to sdfatloss.com is absolutely free. They'll sit down with you. They'll talk with you. They'll make sure they're setting up the exact program for you so you can lose the most weight in the quickest amount of time and then keep it off. And like we said, you mentioned Big Rich, TD, and Fletch. You get $200 off SDFatLoss.com. SDFatLoss.com.
An update with Rasheed Rice and that straight street racing incident coming up next. This update is presented by the Jim Patrell Real Estate Team. Padres, they get another win last night, this time in Milwaukee over the Brewers 7-3. Joe Musgrove, six innings. Jackson Merrill, three more hits, a couple more ribbies in the Olympics. Team USA setting up their base basketball team. And it's uh, reported to include LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, among others. In the NBA, the play-in tournament begins tonight. Lakers get the Pelicans. Warriors get the Kings in the West. And then tomorrow night, Heat take on the Sixers. Hawks get the Bulls in Wednesday night on the East. Would you like to know what your home would sell for today? Get a simple text message with your home's value by texting your address to 855-600-6000. You'll get no phone call, just a text. Jim Betrell has the buyer. Simply text your address to 855-600-6000. Mm. My seat is sinking. Bigger seating fledged San Diego Sports 760. We have a pair of tickets to the Lakeside Rodeo happening Thursday, April 25th through the 28th, the 60th annual Lakeside Rodeo taking place at the Lakeside Rodeo Grounds. Bull riding, steer wrestling, exciting events all weekend long. You can buy your tickets at lakesiderodeo.com or just keep it locked in here if you'd like to win them. And she's in the car. She's listening. My beautiful wife, Sarah Dale. Happy birthday. Sarah what? Dale, happy B-Day. Yeah. yeah. She's Party. only 29, and uh, she looks great for her age. Um, Think, doesn't yeah, look yeah. a day over 27, frankly. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um so yeah. happy birthday so we're gonna party. what are you guys doing today um nothing she's going to work <laughs> good, and good. then uh i think we're gonna have some family come over and uh eat some angel food cakes which you, you guys anniversary oh yeah uh, the uh, uh february 14th you did the exact same thing we did you messed up dude what did i do because you got birthdays close together because okay. your birthday is may 4th oh. you got the anniversary right before that yeah. valentine's day somewhere in the middle yeah. that's exactly what me and kendall did and, then, and it's like three months of just giving presents well well so i don't i'm not sure if you're expecting maybe no. but mother's day three weeks away yeah it's it's a busy time yeah and mother's day <laughs> arguably more important than birthday right. and anniversary right. depending on the household you're in Certainly, I've already gotten some Mother's Day requests coming across Have the you? bow. Is oh, it like yeah. take everyone and leave? No, well, no, yeah, <laughs> that actually is the best Mother's Day. If you're looking for a great gift, it's solitude. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> On Mother's Day, it's right. letting your the mother in your life be left alone for a little while, especially when with little kids. Do you Every, know who else's birthday it is today? 
Uh, no. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> no. Even better. Molly Kim. Akon. What? Wait. Wait. <laughs> I just had sex and it felt so good. Wait. Akon the singer? <laughs> yeah. Wait. I love Akon. <laughs> Hang on a second. No way. You just laugh. Yeah. I love I love Fletch's brain. Wait. He was just like, God, April 16th. Why oh. can't I remember who's bra- Oh, Akon. Akon. It's Akon's birthday. Oh. <laughs> Locked up. Won't let me out. Won't let me out. <laughs> we'll look up famous birthdays on April 16th and yeah, see sing. what we got here. Uh, Selena's birthday. You mean the the singer? Yeah, Selena's? yeah, Selena. Uh, Ann Taylor Joy, Chance the Rapper. Okay, wow, okay, okay. Um, don't know who that is. Charlie Chapman. Oh my, Charlie Chapman. Martin Lawrence. Okay. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah, right. And you were correct. Uh, you were not a fountain of misinformation. Well, text here. Text line is. told me that it was Akon's birthday. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. Right. Thank you, Jeremy. It is Akon's birthday. <laughs> um, I don't know any of these other people. I mean, oh, it's six hundred breezies. Oh, of yeah, course, of course. course. Yeah. Who could forget? Mm-hmm. Um, by uh, the way, you mentioned those Lakeside Rodeo tickets. We will be giving those away. And that is a perfect segue to this topic, because while I was in Dallas, Texas, I went to a rodeo. Right. Um, and when I was there, I was also covering the Rishi Rice car accident, or I should say chain reaction car accident. He was speed racing. And then all of a sudden there were six cars involved in a car accident. I was boots on the ground. There are <laughs> helicopters everywhere. I'm taking video. It was insane, guys. None of that's true. But what is true <laughs> is he's now being sued for punitive and actual damages to the amounts in total $11 million. Ouch. So this tough off season for uh, for our good buddy Rice, Rishi Rice, has only gotten more difficult. Um, what do you think is going to happen with the Chiefs? Are they going to be drafting a receiver? Because I would say this probably changes the whole dynamic in the war yeah. room all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like it's getting better for Rice. It looks like it's getting worse. Would so- you say it's getting hot? Like, oh, boy. Oh, you know what's <laughs> coming next. It's oh, just, just like could be a rice cooker. It wasn't even good. It's Bill Belichick's birthday. <laughs> Is it also Bill Belichick's birthday? You should send him a text. I should. Oh my god! I don't even think I have a cell phone number. So Tito, just send him a laugh. selfie of your like little face that you make. You know, <laughs> hey coach, <laughs> happy birthday! Ah, ah! We can sing to him if you want. We should probably sing to Bill <laughs> Belichick. Actually, if you're watching Bill, and I know you are, uh, he watches our show every day on the stream. Let's all do it together. Uh, happy birthday See, not even here yet. to you. Cha, cha, cha. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. In? Happy birthday, <laughs> dear Belichick. Oh. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. I still think he's an asshole for cutting me. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> oh, we're not allowed to say Wait, that? No. Oh, oh okay. God. <laughs> We had to dub half the song. But, you know, I will cut that up on video later. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> <sighs> okay, Gosh. so, yeah. So, Rasheed Rice. Yeah, dude, mm-hmm. I, I they have to draft a receiver. I think so, too, man. This sucks because Rasheed Rice had everything out in front of him. He, like, he had this set up to where he could be a number one wide receiver in this league by, what, two years from now? Like, he's on that trajectory to being a, a real, legit number one, signing a huge contract. 25 plus million dollars a year and then he does this he's driving around with a bunch of weed in the back of his car and a lamborghini that he leased and another car is racing next to him that he owns and now he's in all this trouble because what the numbers you're talking about rich that's not even legal stuff that he's in no those mm-hmm. are, that's a civil suit yeah and look the weed in his car i don't know what the laws are in texas but the weed in his car probably not a problem that would be my guess it's Texas, more like you can't even smoke weed in Texas. You, I don't you can't. Think. I have no idea. No, oh, I think so Texas is medical only. Okay, well then that's a problem. Yeah, I'm unless he, unless he has a prescription. I for, could be wrong. For tons on that. of weed. I'm just pretty sure <laughs> Texas <laughs> He's got glaucoma. TD <laughs> should be more sense. Okay, so check this out. Possession of marijuana under two ounces is still punishable by up to 180 days in jail and up to a $2,000 fine. I believe this is in Okay, Texas. so w- would you rather have 180 days in jail and a $2,000 fine or an $11 million fine? And <laughs> we don't know the jail time. Yeah, dude, this isn't good. Man. This is really, really bad. 
Oh, possession of marijuana between two and four ounces is still punishable for up to a year oh, in wow. jail. And that, so, I mean, look, I don't know how much yeah. he had. I want to say it was like 8.1 grams. But, which... but we don't know. He may have walked away from this because he had been smoking the marijuana, yeah. not just in his possession. So now it's a, uh, it's an under the influence type of a problem. Now it's, I mean, potential. Well, it wasn't manslaughter. Nobody died. No, I guess no. He got away with but that. but bodily harm, bodily injury, aggravated yeah. assault, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. things like that. Whatever it is. Here's here's the deal for the Chiefs. Again, look, he's in hot water. From a personal standpoint, he better control himself or he's going to end up out of the league. Yeah. It's just how it works. Dude. But from the Chiefs standpoint, like they need a corner. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I hate to to be so, like, business-focused here, but they need an offensive tackle. Don't get me wrong. It couldn't hurt getting a wide receiver anyways because they were a little thin at that position group, but there are other needs. But and if now they're nothing at that group. Yeah, if you're... Like, if, they have Marquise Brown. If you're Andy Reid or the front office with the Kansas City Chiefs, you're like, you just screwed us, buddy. God, right. Justin Jefferson's going to be a chief, isn't he? Look, <laughs> so I, it feels like it's possible. If I were the Chiefs, I would be all over getting a receiver like white on rice. Just leave again. It's just where well, you're going for the record. Is that are you trying to do? I it? think I may have already had it. it, it, it you're like up four. to three. This will be I four. Just, I did two the time before last. <laughs> about, about four. <laughs> the double lap. I forgot about the double Do I need lap. to take a fence for that? It seemed like that was good. If you want to win Lakeside Rodeo tickets, it's very simple. Just wait two minutes. Okay, so at exactly seven forty-two thirty. I want you to wait until seven forty-two thirty. That's when you call. You call in at. 877-767-4760. That's 877-SORG-760. Yeah, it's spelled with an S and a G. We mental did that note. On purpose. Mental note. We gave away these tickets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. TD tried to give away these tickets twice, but we do have a pair to the Lakeside Rodeo. So if you want to take the family out there, or just a buddy, rather it's a pair. But yeah, if you want to go to the rodeo, you just call it uh, mm -hmm. seven forty-two. We have to give out a listener lap. Yeah, and I feel bad about doing this. Why? But Paris, you're taking a lap. Man. What happened? What he he typed in a con or a corn. Wow. Are you kidding Actually, me? I gotta uh, be honest with you. Yeah, that's a fantastic. What? <laughs> no, no, lap no, 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 no. Hey, Paris, you stay right yeah. where you are, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, no. You, any of you, been outvoted two to one here. Jeez, that's, that's a great joke. Acorn. How did we not get that? I wish we did. We need Paris here. We need Paris here. You wonder why? Because he's a real man. Right. And I idolize Paris for those reasons. And that's the reason why I went to Golden Triangle Plastic Surgery, the man zone. Because I needed to up my testosterone. I was looking at I was looking at Paris, one of our best listeners, mm -hmm. smoking a cigar, mm -hmm. having that white monster every morning, mm -hmm. just hanging with us. I'm like, well, I mean, that's the ideal physical form. Yeah, I remember you printed out a photo and walked into the man zone. You're like, make me this. <laughs> just slam it on yeah. the desk. Like, Dr. Roy David, medical director of the man zone, whatever we have to do, make this happen. And he said, well, first, we got to test your testosterone and stop yelling. And I was like, okay, sorry. So anyways, he did. He tested my testosterone. And I was feeling, here were my, my symptoms. Everybody's different. But my symptoms were I was feeling sluggish, feeling a little tired, feeling lack of enthusiasm about working out. Um, also feeling a little brain fog, right? And I'm thinking none of this is really related to testosterone. But one of my buddies who's on testosterone replacement therapy, another former NFL guy, was like, no, you should really get tested because a lot of those symptoms were what I was feeling as well. And it's really changed those. And, and it's become more positive. So I went in, talked to Dr. Roy David and his staff. They tested my testosterone. I was in the low average range. You know, I was kind of teetering on the balance of being within the acceptable range. And he was like, we need to optimize this. We need to get these numbers boosted up. And as soon as we did, and I mean, as soon as we did, within two weeks, I was feeling like myself again. I was feeling good jumping out of bed. You know, even sometimes when I wasn't getting enough sleep, just feeling better in general. I was chugging coffee before, less so now. I mean, relying on caffeine to get myself through the day, less so now. And it's all thanks to Dr. Roy David and his great staff, his great team over at the Man Zone. And this doesn't feel like a sterile doctor's office where you walk in. It's got that weird hospital smell. No, he set it up so it feels good. You walk in. They got this great little lobby. It's got a beer fridge, a little bourbon you can pour for yourself. ESPN on the screen. Got comfortable seats. You wait. You go in. You get a quick test. 
You find out what your numbers are at. And you should do this every year if you're in your 40s, 50s, or 60s. This should be a requirement. I don't know why it isn't. But every time you go in for your annual physical, I want you to also head over to the man zone, get your T levels checked. Even if you're in your late 30s like me, it's time. Head over to the man zone or check them out at themanzone.com. That's themanzone.com. Okay, coming up next, um, this has nothing to do with baseball, but everything to do with baseball on the other side.
Every Tuesday, TD has lost all the height in his chair. I don't know what happened to the pneumatic shocks over there, but they are low. Yeah, it was somebody else who was sitting here because SCFatLoss.com <laughs> will help you not break your chair. It's a real game changer. Right. Yeah, um, Darren Smith, real fat ass. Yeah, he is such a fatty. <laughs> like, I talk about it a lot to Wayne and Chloe over at SCFatLoss. Like, look. Can you please reach out to Darren? We are trying to recruit him in. He is reluctant. Yeah. We told him how easy the program was, but look, the guy's got a weight problem. I mean, <laughs> I, you just look at him. And then, and then after that, John. Oh Ooh, God. Yeah, well, God. yeah. Both of them occupy that seat when you're not there, and both of them probably could use the help of Wayne and Chloe. That's what I'm saying. Fat loss. Speaking of that, check out this headline: The proof going vegan isn't better for you. Ha study finds plant-based meat products are full of salt and fat eat it jay riff uh and Thank schaefer you. and fink and yeah. who we'll see when the, our four corners well, news correspondent comes in here to give us the news from around the map the news we didn't know we needed to know that's right wow how are we going to ask david vasse about shohei otani's betting scandal we're just going to ask him just, straight out just straight out text dude. line wants us to ask if he's ever bet with shohei I'm oh, the, yeah, I'm oh, dude, that. oh yeah. yeah if the okay. text line wants to ask david vasse dodgers insider david vasse um very hated man on this very program david vasse any questions about the dodgers as they lost their second series to the padres <laughs> Does Max Muncy smell as bad as he looks? He smells. Yeah, but that's a great question, actually. We I should, would love to know that question. Like every question we ask should be pointed towards betting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, David, like, we bet that yeah. Shohei is going to have a pretty <laughs> awful season. Right. A lot of distractions. Right. right, right. right. <laughs> we'll see how he responds. Hey, mm -hmm. David, do you also think Freddie Freeman's kid is stupid? So check this out. Did you guys see this news before we get to Gronk? Um, there was a teacher who's caught naked with a student who turns out she's married to the director of the U S department of defense Yeah, the, or a deputy, uh, yeah, oh, a deputy, deputy at department of defense. So I don't know if that's the director. I have no idea, but, uh, Nebraska substitute teacher allegedly caught naked with a teen on Saturday, uh, revealed to be a Harvard educated deputy at department of defense. Why or wife, I guess. I here's know. a, here's a crazy thing about me. I, and listen, I, I think it's bad in general, in general, when we're talking about these things, bad. But if I'm 17, I'm personalizing this, mm -hmm. and I'm a single, young, just Richie young, Ornberger young buck. out in the wild, yeah, just a stag. Right. Now, I'm not talking about breaking up a marriage or infidelity or anything like that, but if all of a sudden an older gal, a teacher friend of mine, takes a liking to me, <laughs> Do you realize how cool I would be? It was how many high fives you're throwing? My hand would be broken from all the high fives I'd be getting. <laughs> you guys see that Pete Devin, Dude, yeah, Davidson yeah. sketch? That's look what I was referring picture. to. Look, look at this picture of this lady all dolled up. Hey, so Rich, when you were 17. Yeah, go ahead. You have anything you'd like to share with the class? What, about what? That, that's actually her yearbook photo, I think. If you uh, if you find her her. Oh, here's Instagram the mugshot. Oh, is that her mugshot? Dude, here's the mugshot. Oh, she's, uh, she's in rough shape. Okay, well, they woke her up for yeah. this picture. I mean, jeez. Like they woke her up out of a bottle of vodka. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, you know, you, you catch anybody at the wrong moment, you know, things can take a turn. Look, the point is, all I'm saying is, like, it would be the worst thing in the world if you're 17 and all of a sudden, I don't know, an older lady wants to teach you something, like a little Mrs. Robinson situation. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not opposed to it at Fletch. all. Look at all the. Look at all those picks. A, yeah. By the way, Fletch, you're staying awfully quiet for a guy who has a uh, a profile on GrannyZone.com. It's true. Yeah, that is true. I like him, Dusty. She's, she's only 45 though. Yeah. Ooh, man. Oh, that's, way too that's young. Way too Come young. On. I mean, that's yeah. decades too young. What are we young. doing? Yeah, dude. She probably drives like a Honda Civic. You need somebody who's in like a a Buick late model. Uh... <laughs> look, I've always said it. If she's 83, she's for me. You mean 83 <laughs> years old? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> but Martha Stewart's 82. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Have a rhyme. She's a little like, young. She's like yeah. Yeah, a year away from being a prime candidate. Yeah. yeah so anyways, instead of throwing out the first pick, Gronk at a at a Red Sox game just decided to spike the ball directly into a mound. <laughs> Who did the Gronk spike? Dude, it's Dude. absolutely amazing how good he is in moments like that. Yeah. I don't know if I... Love him as a commentator, but I love his energy as a commentator. But dude, 
when when you give him a mission, like go out there and have fun. If the mission is fun, he's bringing the fun. We saw this 93 times throughout his NFL career. He scored 93 touchdowns and he did that same spike over and over again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he gets out to Boston in front of his fan base, people that love and adore Gronk, and he spikes the first pitch. Do you, badass. do you think that he came up with it right there on the spot? Like, was he going to pitch the ball and then went, nah, I'm just going to do this or from the get go. Him, I bet somebody put him up to it. They were like, you won't spike it. And he was like, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> went out there, just <laughs> left a crater in the mound. Fantastic. <laughs> like a meteor landing. Look, it's fun. I love it. And it brought the cool factor, man. And you know, that place just roared absolutely absolutely all right coming up next like we mentioned john fink is going to be sauntering into the studio we'll talk with him our four corners news respond uh or correspondent also david vasse uh <laughs> hosts the dodgers talk <laughs> he does pre and post for the dodgers get your questions ready for if you have any questions you'd like to ask a dodgers insider go ahead and get them lit up on the text line 70470 start your message with uh team or you could leave a in-person message we could play for him uh, via our talkback feature. Just go on the free iHeartRadio app, click the little microphone button when you're listening to the station, and you can leave him a question if you want to ask one yourself. Um, okay, want to step aside for a second, talk about a great cause here in San Diego. It's the San Diego Giving Back Raffle. It's an awesome way to give to an amazing community resource. And you get a chance to win one of thousands of prizes, including a house. Okay, you could win a multi-million dollar historic house right across the street from Balboa Park right here in San Diego. So the Ronald McDonald House is what the San Diego Giving Back Raffle helps to support. And what the Ronald McDonald House does is it helps keep family close to their hospitalized children. Any Anytime you have a family, especially one who, you know, maybe they live further north in California or maybe they're from a different state, but they need specialized care that is only offered right here at the Children's Hospital in San Diego. The Ronald McDonald House is located just 300 steps away and they offer programs and services those for those families to support them in their time of great need and crisis. Okay, there's volunteerism, there's donations, there's contributions through fundraisers like these, but they need more of your help. And the giving back raffle is one of the biggest money makers for the Ronald McDonald House. And like I said, you can win amazing prizes. 2024 marks the 20th year anniversary of the San Diego giving back raffle, benefiting Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. This year's edition features more than 2,000 great prizes, 20 vacations. 20 vehicle options, 20 days of $20,000 prizes this summer, leading up to awarding the biggest prizes on July 25th. Every raffle supporter is guaranteed to win a prize in the grand prize drawing. It's only $150 each ticket, and trust me, it'll be the best money you spend this year. Again, it's the San Diego Giving Back Raffle, the San Diego Giving Back Raffle.
Hour three, Big Rich, TD, and Fletch. This update presented by Fertilome Natural Products. Starting off with the Padres, they got another win last night, this time in Milwaukee over the Brewers, 7-3. to three. Joey Musgrove, six innings. Jackson Merrill got three more hits, a couple more ribbies. In the Olympics, Team USA setting up their basketball team. It's reported to include LeBron, Steph, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, among others. In the NBA, playing tournament begins tonight. Lakers got the Pelicans, Warriors get the Kings. Eastern Conference will begin on Wednesday. Now green thumbs can be even greener. Fertilome has an all-natural product line perfect for use around the home and garden. Fertilome natural products are perfect for organic gardening. Fertilome at your favorite independent nursery or garden center. Make your piece of the planet a healthier place to live. Welcome in, y'all, and howdy. Big Rich, TD, and Fletch on a Tuesday, and happy Tuesday to those who celebrate. It's a big day. It doesn't feel like it, right? April 16th, day after tax day for most of the country. We're just looking at it here. We're thinking to ourselves, we may have had a turning point a week ago in that Cubs game, that comeback victory last Monday, just a little over a week ago. When we were down in the gas lamp. We felt good. We felt good that night. We feel even better today, the day after last night, where in Milwaukee, the Padres did another special thing for the third series in a row, a come-from-behind victory. They did it once against the Cubs, once against the Dodgers, and then here again in Milwaukee against the 10-4, and now 10-5 and Brew Crew. All they do is win. I mean... I'm I'm enjoying a donut. Thank you to (laughs) SDCC who stopped by. Yeah. Uh, who you can vote for the best credit union in San Diego County, SDCCU. It's not big bank banking. It's better. And you know what? We told them as uh, Josh, who came with uh, Dominic Gia Marinara sauce. Mm-hmm. We still don't know how to say his last name. Uh-oh. But when Dom came in, Josh came in. He was like, yeah, we're doing it every year. Uh, we saw you last year. And last year, you guys were eating Oreos with mustard <laughs> when I came in. We're like, yep, that, mm-hmm. that checks out. Oh, that was the first time we saw TD gag on a pickle. By the oh. way, SDCCU, they might need to take a little lap <laughs> here. So big. Because in this uh, get it out to vote at the SDCCU slash vote. But mm-hmm. Donuts that, that Forget. Was a, that's a great website you gave out, by the way. Donuts Forget. Yeah, do, do not do not forget. Yeah, lap. Why? Dude, I hmm. love donuts so much. I'm dipping mine in coffee. Yeah. You're, you're making that a Dunkin' Donut. Yeah, you're damn right. Mm-hmm. Um, So Josh comes in. He's like, you guys were eating Oreos with mustards last time. I'm like, yeah, it's true. He's like, yeah. So look, he was like, I do like hang with you guys. Could you just make sure you tell people to go vote? And we're like, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to come back with the leftover donuts. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Literally cutting side deals right. with SDCCU. <laughs> He's like, whatever it takes, dude. It's uh, I'm assuming it's SDCCU.com forward slash vote. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the one. You got I don't, the paper in front of you, don't you? No, I don't have any paper. You have the only paper. He yeah. dropped it in your Willie Bob basket. Yeah, and then, and then you, you just, rolled you just right into the it on I'll read it exactly. Vote SDCCU Best Credit Union in the Union Tribune Readers Poll for the 25th year in a row at SDCCU slash vote. There you go. I think SDCCU a- takes care of their customers and the community. Vote SDCCU Best Today. SDCCU, SDCC. it's not big bank banking. It's better. By the way, that's what they call a clean read in the biz. <laughs> well done. Right, you right. absolutely nailed that one. It's SDCCU.com slash vote. I love it. Yeah. Uh, dude, I love it. That's a great way to did it. Yep. Um, in Major League Baseball, you're going to have ebbs and flows throughout the season. There is no question we're in a flow stage right now with the Padres, but I'm digging every second of it, and I hope it lasts a lot longer than any of the ebbs that we saw last season. It, it just felt like we kept getting cut off before the good got good enough to get something going. You understand what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. it just felt like every time there was positive momentum, it just got hamstrung by something, whether it be a player injury, whether it be, I don't know, just a bad outing, a bad series. Gary Sanchez breaking his wrist. Gosh, I mean, something like that, honestly, because codename Scorpio was out there just hitting bombs. And then all of a sudden, our favorite backup catcher Mm -hmm. breaks his wrist and it really dashes the hopes of us all he was on pace to break the major league baseball single season record in home runs yeah yeah and then probably not but close and then terra (laughs) struck well he was just like it was like one a day so the padres have a winning record for the first time this month the padres were down three runs to none after two innings of baseball they found a way to put a run on the board in the fourth and then 
the fifth inning comes around. They pile up six runs, 10 batters faced, uh, what's his name, Joe Ross, who was on the mound, and they wore him out. And this is exactly what this team couldn't do a year ago. They would get behind, and it just felt like teams added to their leads, and then eventually the game slipped away. Or they didn't even have to add. Like, sometimes it would be like a one-run difference. It would be the beginning of the middle innings, and you're like, okay, you have four innings to at least put up a run and tie this baseball game and make it interesting, and they couldn't even muster Mm -hmm. that little bit of offense. But here it comes in bunches now. They're getting runners on. I mean, all of it was singles, you know, some bloop singles, some hard hit singles, but that's, it, it, you know, and then there was the uh, the ball four called on the pitch clock violation. There was yeah, the Kim. catcher interference yeah. during that inning in the fifth. But I don't care. You get them on, knock Whatever. them on in, man, yeah. knock them in. And that was one of the complaints from last season is how many games were runners left on in scoring position. I mean, Every it was game, game after game after game. And now, look, last season, it's getting a little bit further behind in the rear view, right? As much as you can want to keep comparing, looking back to it, we're approaching 20 games in of a very long season. But I tell you what, they look pretty good right now. They are they are bringing some confidence in me as a fan breaking down this Padre team. Pretty soon we're not going to talk about last year's team anymore, I think. Pretty soon we're just going to talk about this team based on the merits that this team has, which only would have been the case had this team performed well. And so far to this point, they're playing well, and they're playing cohesive baseball. And I think the biggest difference between this year and last year is they're not all just swinging for the home run, and they are getting guys on base because you only get these big innings. Like the home runs will come, but you only get the big innings by getting people on, getting them over, getting them in. And that is the classic tenant of baseball. Swing yeah. like you're trying to hit a single to right field every time if you're a right-handed batter. Swing like you're trying to hit a single to left field every single time if you're a left-handed batter. And the home runs come. It's not just the merits of this team. It's the Merrills. Jesus. I can't believe oh, you. Oh, Number five. I can't believe it's five laps. Actually, really? I think it's up to six because you it? didn't take one last time. Are you I running two laps right now with a donut in my mouth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right back. Jackson Merrill has been incredible though. And he really has been. He's, like he's another three looking like three a hit night. Yep. Another three hit night, two more RBIs. He's playing a really good center field. Like the what is the future for this guy if this is the beginning? Well, the future is bright. And and you're right. Uh, by the way, going back to the statement you made about last season, I really feel like we'll still talk about last season, but the further we get away from it and the more this season takes on its own identity, the more we're going to talk about how different this season is or will be from last season because of the identity of this baseball team. As TD rounds the bases for another lap, he's making up. So that's six laps on the day. We'll see if he ends up having to run more than that. I do think that's the record. That is the record for sure. Set, set, six laps is a record. He woke up today and chose violence. Oh, he did. Except in the wimpiest way possible he's averaging now more than two laps an hour or actually exactly two laps an hour with that six you're averaging two laps an hour i mean it's impressive pace is he tried is this him like is sarah telling you you need to work out more so you're just purposely making terrible jokes so you have to work out it's sometimes it's some days you lay them up so easy you reach (laughs) real far for him (laughs) oh i know what it is how is that reaching you don't have any nba scores today so you don't oh, have an outlet. <laughs> yeah. Maybe your creative outlet has been uh, yeah. cr- the the hose has been crimped, and so you're all backed up. <laughs> I don't I don't feel like it was a reach though. If you, the mean, merits. If they, you go, it's not just the merits. It's also the Merrills. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a reach. There's only it seems like that's an easy tie-in. Oh, of course. Right. I mean, you 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 did this to yourself. You want to do your halftime? God, you want me to talk? <laughs> Right, do two laps. <laughs> well, we were just talking about it, of course. Padres beat the Brewers yesterday out in Miliwake, seven to three. If you're keeping tally, that's a back-to-back win, boys. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Thank you. He just looked at me like I was wrong, and I was like, "Wait, maybe they <laughs> lost. Wait, yeah, wait, maybe they did. Didn't did they? Right? Wait. Back to back." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Padres now 10-9 and nine on the season. They have the Brewers again today for 41st pitch. I don't really like the 441st pitch time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a little, you know, I guess it's 640 there. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Was that central time? Is yeah. That, or is it? Yeah, I guess it would be central time central in Milwaukee. Time. Yeah, central yeah. Time. I think 440 our time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 640 their time. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <Am I> wrong? 
Anyways, <laughs> uh, we are looking at Greenwich. Meantime, we are seven hours behind the uh, the Central Time Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big Greenwich, big England. Uh, the USA basketball team is finalizing its 2024 Paris Olympics roster. Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Joel Embiid, Devin Booker. Wait, what? Jo- Tyrese Halliburton. Joel Embiid. Yeah, what did so you I said, say? Anthony Edwards. He said Joel. Drew Holiday. Embiid. Bam Adebayo. Anthony Davis, my God, this team is never going to lose. Who's the star of the Greek national team? The, the course, the Greek freak. Everybody knows How do you him. say his name? You say, I say Greek freak is what I say. That's First what name, I, Giannis. Yeah, last name? Uh, Antipacumpo. That's wow, that's bad. actually, dude, that was, <laughs> thank you. you kind of sound like an <laughs> old car starting there. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin brought this up on YouTube, but I did see this yesterday. Now, this is a little skewed because the Padres have played two more games than everybody. But Kevin said team batting average, 261, sixth in Major League Baseball. Home runs, 23, fourth in Major League Baseball. Runs, 103, number one in Major League Baseball. Padres also the first team to eclipse 100 runs in all of Major League Baseball this season. Again, they've played two more games than everybody, but still. I'll take it, though. I don't care. Cheat if you have to. (laughs) It <laughs> doesn't matter to me. Mess the ball. Yeah, it does, it does not make any difference to me. I just want wins, baby. Win. That's a great, great point. Okay, we're going to jump in with David Vasse, Dodgers talk, off of this amazing series where the Padres took two games out of three from the Dodgers. It's a long time coming. We haven't spoken to David Vasse since last season. That's um, true. Last time we spoke to him, uh, he was teased. He was ridiculed for mm-hmm. his love and allegiance to the Dodgers blue. Um, by not only us, but our listeners. So if you have a question to ask, uh, Mr. Dodger, uh, David Vasse, the text line is wide open for you, 70470. Start your message with team. Of course, you can always comment on our YouTube stream, or if you're watching or viewing on X, you can comment there as well. But we welcome him in, as we do every single Major League Baseball season, the host of Dodgers Talk on 570 in L.A., David Vasse. How are you doing this morning, Mr. Vasse? I'm doing great, guys. Uh, not completely surprised you called me. I'm just surprised it took a day. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so DV, um, do you are you aware that your show is single handedly responsible for Jerickson Profar going out there in mm-hmm. the seventh inning in Game Three of this most recent series and absolutely dominating the Dodgers? Did you are you aware that Will Smith's comments to you? I mean, it catapulted the Padres into this, this, this fervor, into mm-hmm. this fury mm-hmm. that they just, I mean, jerks and profile became one of the most relevant, arguably the most relevant baseball player of the night and maybe this young season. Oh, really? So it wasn't J.P. Fireheisen's lukewarm flat cutter uh, with the bases loaded that produced that uh, feat of excellence from jerks and profile. Mm-hmm. And as far as relevancy goes, usually a player that's relevant gets loudly booed in other stadiums, similar to Manny Machado, who's a very relevant player. But Jerks and Profar did not get any boos in the pregame introductions of the lineup. So I'm not sure Dodger fans have taken notice yet. Yeah, David, you know, I don't know if you've noticed Dodgers kind of kind of trending downwards right now. I mean, if you had to <laughs> if you had to put some money on it, you know, if you were a betting man, uh how how, how many wins do you think Shohei helps this team get? Like if you were going to yeah. bet somewhere on average like 12,000 plus yeah. dollars on average, like, like 12,000 to like 160 grand <laughs> per bet. Yeah, per, per bet. bet. <laughs> like how much would you bet on the Dodgers? I would say, uh, as far as the regular season goes, that doesn't matter. What the Dodgers are banking on, $325 million in Mm. the bank this year Mm. for this payroll, is that Shohei Otani can help them get 11 wins in the postseason, which has certainly eluded them over the last decade outside of 2020. So uh, they're going to win their 100 games. They're going to run away with this division, but... For the Dodgers, it's more about what he's going to do for them in October. Do you do you think they're banking on it, or do you think they're just avoiding looking at their bank account, much like Shohei Otani <laughs> did? 
<laughs> David, your response. Good. I see what you did there. I see, I see what you I did mean, there. we're pros over here. Yeah, there's no question about that. Hey, you can't teach that. But uh, <laughs> I know I know San Diego's riding high. You guys are 500. It's exciting. Over, uh, over 500. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pause. Did you miss the game that first pitch, 640 Central Time, 440 our time? Uh, <laughs> we are now a 10 and 9 baseball okay. team, David. God, David, you, you haven't seen this since March, David. He blocks out anything that happens in Milwaukee because that's where he broke his arm on the slide out in Milwaukee. Yeah, that's true. Nothing that happens in Milwaukee is in the real world. I, I just don't. It's not in my stratosphere. But, hey, you can, you might be surprised by this. I feel like the Padres are probably a wild card team this year. So uh, if they could keep uh, El Cajon Joe healthy and you Darvish healthy, uh, they they have a good chance of being a wild card team. Wow. That feels like a backhand. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't, feel great. I don't I understand think, your tactics. I think what he's inferring is that the Dodgers are winning the NL West. So the best, the very mm. best the Padres could do is reach for the wild card. I don't, I don't really disagree with that. <laughs> he's David, making a lot of sense. Yeah. All of a sudden. We have a couple of texts for you, David. The first one from the 760. David Vasse, why are you the way that you are? <laughs> from the 913, David, take a lap for being a Dodgers fan. We do this thing on our Ooh. show when Travis makes uh, dad jokes. We send him on a lap around the building. Mm, but uh, okay. the question I have, and it might take this more serious, but we joked about the Shohei Otani thing a little bit earlier. What's the latest on that? And what is the feeling in LA about Shohei Otani and the scandal that surrounds him? Well, first and foremost, he, he is a guy that nobody really knows, right? Uh, that was the case in Anaheim. And I would say that's still the case uh, with the Dodgers. Uh, he's been a little bit more approachable and more inclusive of his teammates ever since his interpreter and thief, Ipe Mizuhara, has been uh, basically taken down by the Fed. So uh, I guess that's a blessing in disguise in itself, baseball-wise, because this guy, by all accounts, was a human shield. Nobody could get to Otani, even his teammates or coaches, without having to go through Ipe. So just around the clubhouse and the vibe around the team, it's much better to deal directly with Otani um, when you're just talking baseball. So that's a good thing. And it feels like this has been put behind everybody considering the federal government um, basically said in that 36 page document that Otani was a victim in all this. So, uh, I mean, he acted like it never was happening. The Dodgers wanted to act like it was never happening. And it feels like now it's been put behind them. And it feels like the federal government isn't wasn't initially after the betters, um, but they were after this bookie in Orange County, and all this came to light in the process. It felt very much uh, last season, or I should say the start of last season, that the Dodgers' fiercest rival in the NL West was the Padres. Is that still the case this season? Do you feel as though the Dodgers, you know, because Doc Roberts talked about it, the front office spoke about it, it really did feel like they were looking over the fence, seeing what San Diego was doing, and they were on notice, certainly making decisions, corresponding moves to how much money and and how many player ads the Padres were making in turn. Is that the still is that still the case, would you argue? Uh, I would say last year that was not the case. Uh, they did not chase the Padres after they made some uh, big splashes. Uh, which obviously did not work out for the Padres last year. They did not make the postseason, while the Dodgers still won 100 games and won the West again. And just talking to people around the Padres, by the way, uh, it feels like there's a lot of addition by subtraction on this roster, and the pieces of their puzzle are fitting a lot better. So, no, the Dodgers never chased the Padres uh, as far as the acquisitions, and uh, it seems like the Dodgers always had their eye on Otani and Yamamoto, um, not just for baseball reasons, but for business reasons, too. David, uh, from the text line here, the 484, how many days off does Bueller need? Is his dad Ferris? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. It's a good, good, it's a good line. Solid question. It's a good line. <laughs> Was he in rehab? Is now? everybody still on the bandwagon in San Diego? I'm just curious. Did they jump off after last year? 
What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I mean, like, there's no our, bandwagon here. Yeah, you know how, what? Even I, if there I, is, I thought I saw a long how, line how, in the refund line. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. How, many more victory, how many more victory lap contracts are they going to give Kershaw? Are they going to wheel out that bag of bones for oh, much? I mean, come wow, on. What are we dealing with? Wow, what are yeah, we dealing with? Now Wait. you're tempting the baseball gods by saying those type of things. <laughs> Similar to the crying emoji posted after game one of their season series last year it kind of feels like the baseball gods um had the last lap on the padres oh, after oh, that class oh was that cool. was a really good game david yeah yeah that that was fine we worked it worked out fine because look now we're here yeah we yeah have, and we there. have oh, 10 and 9 what? Uh, yeah, 10, <laughs> yeah. you're damn right yeah. how about this three and two against the dodgers yeah so, oh. congratulations what happened oh. against the nationals last night david Huh? <laughs> yeah, yes. CJ Abrams. Remember that name? He uh he helped the Nationals beat the Dodgers. You don't screw you, Wait, David. David, David. <laughs> that one stinks. Hey, how often do you go out and polish up the Fernando Tatis Jr. plaque uh -huh. out there at Dodger Stadium? <laughs> yeah, we, we want that 467 looking real purdy. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he's got a great arm. The way he hit the first base bag with nobody standing there the other night was impressive. Jeez. Wow. I mean, you know, wow. Like, you know what? I like, honestly, why is there a plaque for Fernando <laughs> Tatis Jr.? Because like, yeah. if there was a Max Muncy plaque at Petco Park, I'd be pissed every day. They actually have like uh, a marker for all the the tape measure shots. Mark McGuire, John Carlos Stanton out there to mark uh, where those home runs landed. And that's but dumb. Is there is there a I threshold? Mean, you don't want to get into uh, how Tatis hit that home run, do you? Well, uh, well we don't well, care. Well, well, we don't care. Topical wait, 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 hold on, hold wait on. Wait, wait. How much would you wager? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I, actually, you don't have to place bets. Maybe you have an interpreter no, who you might yeah. want to <laughs> place bets for you. <laughs> it is. It is. I I don't really know how to react to how uh, how much bravado. You guys are representing for the city of Slam Diego, considering the disastrous season they had last year with that payroll and, uh, you know, the mediocre start they've had to this season. Wow, we you, you say mediocre, that. and we have Jackson Farrell yeah. Merrill. Yeah, How so about I was going to say three words for you. Jackson Farrell <laughs> Merrill. Yeah. Yeah, take that. Put I like that. Jackson Merrill. He's a good player. He's not bad. Mm -hmm. Good not dude. Bad. Yeah. You know what, David? We we no, uh, even no the, gambling problems. <laughs> the, the, none in sight. None in sight. Thanks, Manny Machado coming on the show because he comes on my show all the time. Yeah, he. Uh, well, he keeps asking, and we're like, oh, we're busy. Yeah, yeah. We got John <laughs> Fink coming. We're like, well, Manny, we'll catch up with it later. We got David Vasse coming yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> this is as close as you can get to Manny Machado. You are wow electric. Yeah. Every time we have you on the show, you should see our ratings <laughs> it is unbelievable thank you again for another boost dv we'll do it again soon i guess we'll check back in may see how you guys are feeling then you did well maybe well, yeah, maybe, maybe, we might maybe be not busy. it depends we yeah. could be busy who knows <laughs> there he goes david Vasse, <laughs> our dodgers correspondent dodgers talk pre and post uh he mm. is what sparked the jerickson profile revolution i call it up right. in la yeah uh, yeah. That seventh inning swarm, uh, Jerickson Profar, obviously, probably on the doorstep of a Hall of Fame bid. Listen, when I mean, you're looking, when you're looking at the season so far, I mean, Profar, pro good. Get out! God, wow. yeah. it's just amazing. Yeah. That's his seventh lap, unprecedented territory. Here's what I know: Jerickson Profar tonight against the Brewers. Go ahead, taking more. Oh boy, I'm taking gonna, more on prize picks. I didn't even think of that. I haven't even seen up what app. his total is, but I've been liking actually a lot uh, for baseball. Okay, the see. hits plus runs plus RBIs. Yeah, I've stat. done that. I've done that a couple times. Oh, Jerickson Pro. Oh, we got a demon. Tell we me got about a demon. It. More than one and a half total bases. Oh, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, I'm clicking. He'll, it. he'll get the second somehow. Okay, more than half a double. Will he hit a double? No. Okay. All That's right. a demon so, that I don't right, mess I'm, with. But I'm, prize picks, and if you use those horses. demons, by the way, on prize picks, you can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into 1000 bucks with baseball or darts or any of the other games you want to play. Prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million active members. The easiest, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps, on prize picks, all it is is you against the numbers. You're not picking against sharks. You're not picking against competitive leagues. It is just you. And the numbers in the app that you pick more than or less than on Richie, what else are you looking at? Oh, I got uh, another demon, LeBron James, more than nine and a half assists. Yeah. I know it's a lot, yeah. but if if they try to shut down LeBron, he's going to be feeding. Yeah. What do you think? 
Uh, I might, I, I might not touch that. Demon. I might put together a little pro far LeBron James entry here. I'm going for it. I'm Just going all for demons. It. I like it. That's all how you demons. get the higher payouts. Prize picks now offering Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this season. Download the app today. Use code DOGS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. That's code DOGS, D O G S, on Prize Picks for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. We got to get to the stories you didn't know you need to know. Newsman John Fink joins us. Four Corners next. This update is presented by Next Guard Plus. Starting off with the Padres, they get another win last night. This time in Milwaukee over the Brewers, 7-3. Joe Musgrove, six innings pitch. Jackson Merrill, three more hits, a couple more ribbies. They got the Brewers again tonight. In the Olympics, Team USA setting up their basketball team. Reported to include LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, among others. And in the NBA, the playing tournament gets going tonight. Lakers got the Pelicans. Warriors get the Kings on the western side. 
Next Guard Plus chewable tablets is the one you want for your dog's monthly protection. Used with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Ask your veterinarian today about Next Guard Plus. Choose today. for it san diego sports 760 and we have a pair of tickets we still need to give away here to the indoor football league san diego strike force hard hits and a ton of fun for families and friends this sunday no next sunday 428 against the bay area panthers that means SD. april what did i say just said four all i said was four yeah all i said was number four is that 428 did i have a stroke uh maybe wait 428 yeah april 28th <laughs> What do you think I was given the time? I don't know. <laughs> April 28th against the Bay Area Panthers, ststrikeforce.com for tickets and info or keep it locked in here, especially this segment, because we will try to give them away if we remember here in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Meanwhile, we do it every single week here. It's the stories you didn't know you needed to know. Four Corners. Mm. Mm. Scouring the globe to find the stories you didn't know you needed to know. Yes. From the Four Corners News Desk, I'm John Fink. J John, oh, let me turn yes. the camera here, John. Hang on. Oh, sure. I, yeah, well, I can't work under these conditions. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So much better. There we go. Oh, wow. Good at this. Yeah, I don't exist if people aren't watching me. Yeah. <laughs> um, Heinz Ketchup has unveiled the solution aimed at addressing the mishaps faced by ketchup enthusiasts what? with the introduction of the first ever catch up insurance policy whoa 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 mishaps as in i accidentally squirt ketchup on myself that's a great question travis okay. they actually on their website heinzketchupinsurance.com they outline 57 imagine that course, different damage descriptions which heinz says can be eligible for a claim <laughs> okay. some of the better ones are the mega squeeze <laughs> I think I read it that movie. Uh, the claimant attempts a mega squeeze of Heinz ketchup, causing all of a sudden not interested not anymore. Interested. Yeah, oh, it's a great five-minute movie. Yeah, um, it causes ketchup to disperse in all directions. It's also, God. Heinz site. They attempt to squeeze the bottle with a loose nozzle. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've done that. It yeah. happens to the best of us. Sure has. Uh, causing temporary vision impairments. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Ketchup wow. is dangerous. It can't, yeah. If it gets in your eyes. You know what the big red is? Apparently, it stings. When you disperses ketchup droplets and when the person disperses ketchup droplets over self and the surrounding perimeter in a miscalculated <laughs> yes. squeeze attempt what like a ketchup that? grenade <laughs> called the big red the, the big, big red, red. Okay. well fair enough yeah mm. yeah um i don't know i don't <laughs> trying to see how much it costs i would like to pull out a policy this is all vaguely yeah. sexual <laughs> i'm just going to i mean point point to four out. corners right, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, wow yes. how about uh <laughs> How about number 33 here on the list, the cushion recoloring? Go, well, Excuse me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's when the claimant redecorates nearby sofa cushions with, oh. a, with a splatter wow. of Listen, ketchup. Just as a, a word for experience, <laughs> keep your keep your dish on the coffee table. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. eat or, out of your lap. Yeah. Or if you can't help yourself, I mean, just apply some towels to the upholstered items around. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, lay a towel down is solid advice for pretty much. Man, oh, man. Yeah. 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 What does this word even say here? Number 54. Yeah. The, the Rudloff? Yeah. yeah. The Rudloff is Rudloff. when the claimant squirts the ketchup within close proximity of their face, <laughs> causing a drop splatter precisely on the tip of their nose. That seems oh, like Rudolph. a symptom of being hangry. You know, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Like, just like I can't, I can't wait. I need to eat this right now. <laughs> Target practice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm too into the ketchup insurance. What else? That's we all got? right. Uh, we've got a couple other stories here. We're gonna go to Baldwinsville, New York. Good. A student at Baldwinville's C.W. Baker High School has now been arrested for allegedly sending a fax posing as the principal, stating that he was resigning. <laughs> <laughs> the 17-year-old boy. <laughs> created fake school email accounts and then used them to send a fax pretending to be the principal resigning from the school. <laughs> so, so I quit. Yeah. Listen, um, I wasn't like the greatest student in high school. Uh -huh. Okay. 
And uh, I didn't get along real well with the vice principal there. Okay, fair. Okay. So one Thanksgiving, we knew the vice principal's address. Oh. So we called the power company oh. and we had his power shut off on Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Oh, <laughs> Oh God! Oh, oh my God! Yeah, I wonder where it, it was. Cool. I wanted, you didn't have to do anything. It was just like an automated system. Yeah, like I'm yeah, leaving. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. I want my surface shut off. This we're day. outside. I, I hope we're outside the statute of limitations. <laughs> yeah, exhibit A. Here. I think he's dead. Hey, oh. um, <laughs> by the way, you have an admirer on the uh, stream. I do. This woman named Jody just wrote in me. Wow. Oh, oh as soon as we, Jody. Jody. As soon as that we, must be bad, Jody. I think I know who that is. Wow. <laughs> Shout out to Jody. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So yeah. This, this. Are we allowed to say that? I, we, yeah. yeah the, the second thing she wrote, we'll tell you later when you're older. Yeah. Uh, but, because this oh. one is just for the adults in the room. Oh, That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I do want to be just like you guys when I grow up. Wow. So it's good to know. <laughs> Got goals. Yeah. Have goals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. San Diego goals? Oh, Tickets? I, I, can't I, I cannot believe Bro, it. I get, in the middle of four can't, corners? Oh. I can't four corners under these conditions. <laughs> Man, you're gonna have to cover the four corners right now. Oh my gosh, I can't believe God, don't go on. Go on. I don't think that was lap worthy. I, I veto. You don't make that decision. Yeah. Wow. Is, is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> just making stuff I didn't up. know there was veto power here. <laughs> I would have vetoed the lap I did last week then if I was veto power. Play stupid games, get stupid rewards. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, well, we'll move on to Alberta, Canada. Um, there is a uh, a pizza company there called Pizza 73. Okay. All right. So yeah. that's what you need to know for this story. Uh, this guy, Justin Rybicki, he doesn't order pizza very often, but now every time. <laughs> wow, that was fast. Dude, yeah, he can move now. That was amazing. Yeah, eight yeah. laps today. Eight. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have quads of steel I'm by usually, the end of this week. I'm usually not sweating, not on a Friday. Um, yeah. Pizza 73, pizza Alberta, 73 Canada. Alberta, Canada. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, yes, yeah, so this guy doesn't order pizza very often, but now when he sees Pizza 73 commercials, it gives him nightmares. In the past six months, someone has been ordering hundreds of dollars worth of pizza <laughs> in his name, and he's not really sure why. <laughs> Just all of a sudden, the doorbell rings, and somebody's like, here, here's your pizza, give me money. <laughs> Does he pay for it? No, he oh. sends them back, which is, you know, the delivery drivers love. Yeah, 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 they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they love it. Uh, but he's now trying to figure out what's going on. He thought it was a mistake, but he checked his email and saw the confirmation order. Uh, he decided to go to the police about it eventually. By the time he got to the station, there was another order being <laughs> delivered. <laughs> okay, you want to hear something crazy? What's this? So uh, I think this is happening in New York. There was reports of people getting pizzas not only sent to them, but somebody else was paying for them. Oh, now I'm not mad oh, at wow. that. Okay, but wow. what's crazy is so the gift of pizza. So I get, like this. So there was a woman who was like, "I'm not kidding you. I'm getting pizza every day." She was like, and at first I was like, "Well, I'm sending it back because somebody clearly ordered it in error." Right. And then she was just like, "No, I guess not because they're saying no. They're calling it in and they're saying send it to her." And so. Eventually, she was like accepting of the pizza, and they were having pizza every day. She was trying to hand out pizza to everybody she knew, and then they started getting tired of getting pizza. So she's still getting all this pizza. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do with all the goddamn pizza. <laughs> That's that too much. Well, we can't. We can't GD it. I, I keep we forgetting. Can't GD I keep that. forgetting yeah, the that's, rules. That's the third down Ooh, today. Man. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Was there? Was there a? A resolution to the pizza story? Did they well, find out what happened? Here's what happened. He eventually. Uh, talked to Pizza 73 corporate and was like, I'm not ordering from you guys. So then apparently this, I guess a prankster, started ordering from Domino's. What? And then he started getting nonstop Domino's orders. God, that's great. So that's uh, great. apparently they have to call in a pizza detective <laughs> wow. uh, who does all of his uh, work on a very tiny little little table about this <laughs> big three legs all the stuff spread out there. Which we yeah. did find out that's not a tiny table no i we thought it was a table for rats yeah. turns yeah. out mm -hmm. it's supposed to keep the cheese from the box from collapsing and the cheese to getting on the top of the box. also that makes sense also yeah 
It's a tool. Yes, I see. You this. one hand on one slice, like the adjacent slice you want, and then the only slice you have to touch is the one you do want because yeah. you're holding the, the pizza back with the little table. I've seen someone use a pizza, like a pizza cutter, with it. like use one of the little table legs. Oh, and just go, whoa, wow. Well, 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 you know what? Jesus. When in need, like if you were out like on a deserted island yeah. and you were delivered a pizza and you had no cutter, yeah, you would use the tiny table. No question. I mean, uh, you'd probably also be like, hey, how did you get here? <laughs> Can I go back with you? Yeah, I, would like I, would just be like, I would be like, yeah. I I did not order this. I did not pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then four more pizzas show up. Um, yeah, yeah. You are the man. Thank mm -hmm. you for being our Four Corners correspondent. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, incredible job, as always. Again, bringing you the news you didn't know you needed to know. Wow. Nicely right. done. Thank you, John. Nicely Thanks. done. Um, Very nice. And uh, no easy segues in Sports Talk Radio. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you guys about my teeth. <laughs> Uh, Ocean it's, View Dental. L listen, you you couldn't even eat pizza before. No, no. Yeah. And it's, actually, that is true. Uh, I needed new molars. I needed three implants put in. Doctor Jordan Colby is a specialist. People from all over Southern California flock to Ocean View Dental. He's got an office in Oceanside. He's got another one in Fallbrook. He does amazing work. You're going to get the sort of quality of attention that your family deserves, that you deserve. His motto is you could have a healthy smile in just a day, and oftentimes he achieves this. It's incredible. With me, I was told that my whole experience, my whole ordeal was going to take 18 months by my prior dentist. I go to Dr. Jordan Colby, the whole thing, the extraction I needed, and then three implants took three months. It was an incredible process. I didn't miss a single day of work through it all. I barely felt any pain. The guy is a miracle worker. So if you're in a situation like me where you need extensive oral surgery or dental work done, you need to look no further than Ocean View Dental. Or if you're just due for your next teeth cleaning or a cavity or you got you know, root canal, anything coming up from that standpoint, go to OceanViewDental.net. Again, that website, OceanViewDental.net. And we have a ticket giveaway. Yeah. Strike Force, baby. Woo! Woo! Yeah, you want to win some Strike Force tickets? Call number five right now, 877 767 4760. You're going to go. Coming up, bottom of the barrel, or we just say goodbye because we're out of time. Either way, it's coming up next.
I was super fat. Gross. Not too long ago. Disgusting. Just sweaty and uh, foul. People said, Rich, Nasty. you are sweating ranch dressing. Like, I didn't think that was vomitous is good. <laughs> it's a great adjective. Um, they, they didn't even knew that, know that was possible. Uh, many uh, medical uh, personnel from the uh, offices here and abroad said, you should, you should probably already be dead. That's what they said. <laughs> they were like, we now pronounce you dead. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a second. I'm still talking to you. <laughs> yeah. They were like, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, you're right there. You're knocking on death's door. Look, the point is I was, I, I was, oh, I was overweight, heavy set, obese, needed to do something about it. Sad, sad, <laughs> vomitous. And I met Wayne and Chloe, and mm -hmm. everything changed. SDFatLoss.com. Uh, no, this isn't a joke. They honestly helped right the ship. I was all the way back up to my playing weight. Uh, I was feeling awful, feeling, I don't know, just like in Ottoman time, just like, you know, you kind of stuck in a lurch. You just can't seem to get any uh, positive inertia going. And then all of a sudden, they're like, here, let us introduce you to the plan. SDFatLoss.com gets you right, right away. Within a week's time, I had already lost over 10, 10 pounds. Within two weeks, I had lost over 20 pounds. Within three and a half weeks, I had lost over 30 pounds. And in total, I lost over 35 pounds with SCFatLoss.com in just 30 days. It was unbelievable. And I've been able to keep it off because not only do they have a weight loss plan for you, but they have a weight maintenance plan after you finish the weight loss phase. And it's very simple. It's a seamless transition. And they walk you through the whole thing. You have weight loss gurus, weight loss team, people who answer every single question along the way. The entire time you're working with Wayne and Chloe, they will hold your hand through the process as much as they need to to get you right. And that's exactly what they did for me and all three of us here on this show. So if you're looking to lose weight the natural way, the right way, the way that you'll have lasting change in your life, sdfatloss.com and right now if you mention big rich td and fletch you save two hundred dollars on your subscription all you have to do is mention big rich td and fletch sdfatloss.com save 200 bucks and you'll lose the weight fast Rich TD and Fletch, San Diego Sports 760. Golly, what a show it's been. Woo! What we a are doing we it. Lead. We are doing it. 
Um, okay, so we gave away all the tickets we were required to. We're going to have more tickets to Lakeside Rodeo and San Diego Strike Force coming up tomorrow. Super excited to give those away. Super excited to see the results of tonight's game. Can the Padres win three in a row on the road? Wow. Got How's the, your TV setup going to be tonight? Because I'll have Padres on the iPad, <sighs> NBA on the TV, I think. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't go get a pair of the uh, I, or Apple Pod Pro Vision, Vision Pros. For like the masters, I think they're like thirty five hundred bucks. Yeah, I, I but, would, but I mean, it's not worth it. Did I don't you have thirty five hundred. Did bucks. you see the TikToks of people with their masters set up? No, they had like the leaderboard that was constantly set up on one side, and then they had a couple different camera angles. Then they had sick. YouTube rolling. I mean, it was insane. It was badass. That they had it for March cool. Madness too. They would have like five or six screens up in their living room at the same time. Right. I right. like that a lot. I know, yeah. Actually, probably just the future is now. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's it's happened. Yeah, because I mean, you could do like porn, 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 and then Padres. <laughs> and we're out of time. David Vasse, thank you <laughs> for coming on the show. John Fink, thank you as always. Happy birthday, Sarah Dale. Happy birthday, Bill Belichick. Yeah. Happy birthday, Akon. In that order. <laughs> in that order. We'll see y'all tomorrow. You got it. All right. The, the herd is next. We'll do it all again in just about 24 hours.